Hey, Gaurav. Hey, everyone. Hi, Abhinav. Uh, can someone please confirm if you're live on YouTube? Yeah, it's a live stream. Yes. You can, right? That's great. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. Requesting everyone. <laughs> So, Abhinav, uh, do you mind sharing your experience as a Red Team volunteer? This is the first time you you uh, you participate you participating as a red, first Red Team vol volunteer, right? Uh, kind of, I would say, because I did more of an observing mode in ISSDC. Uh -huh. uh, more of that was more of an observational because we had like so many great Red Team members and senior members there. So I was like, they would cover everything. I would be like, okay, there's nothing really like, and I was learning the ropes that time. So this was my <laughs> first experience. I would take that, that this was my first experience really. Okay. So how was it? I, I think it was great having not only one proposal to really see and then compare that perspective is entirely different. I think for, on a personal note, but in terms of the quality of the proposals from what I saw and what I've seen in the past few competitions, I'm really looking forward to what is presented today. Like it's right up there in my opinion, like 
the quality of the proposals that we are looking forward to i think all of them are right up there with some of the, like really good work so i'm really looking forward to it in that sense that what students and the kind of improvement between the pink team and red team was so phenomenal mm -hmm. rather heartening that students and that's what the competition is about right learning yeah. very quickly and adapting i think that's the most core skill we learn very quickly adapting to changing circumstance and the way they adapted within 24 hours i think that was phenomenal so yeah good luck to everyone thank you enough and uh, yeah i think it was quite unanimous even yesterday that um, there was tremendous amount of uh, you know improvement over a very short period of time which is uh, not seen in the earlier competitions but yeah um, let's see how the judges like it though agreed so yeah hey kareem i think i just saw you there just to shout out hello hello abinav hello everybody yeah i completely agree the uh, level over here has been tremendous and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what all the other companies have come up with too it's been a really really cool competition some very innovative designs happening as well pushing the uh, requirements to to fit something that's not often yet done so it has some interesting sort of tangents that we've gone off and i think this can be shared across most of the companies where we're trying to really think of very niche things and how to make technological sort of fits to to meet the requirements of the RFP so uh, yeah the kids have had a lot of fun i've had a lot of fun looking into them and uh, i'm quite excited to see what uh, what else has been coming up on offer from other companies thank you kareem thank you for volunteering and uh, yes i remember we have a call later to figure out uh, some of the it stuff That's right. Yeah, looking forward to have a chat because uh, Discord has been working fantastically on here, and um, very excited to see how this can be used. Because, um, in all honesty, it's it's fluid. It's it's allowing um, a lot of people to to kind of get on board behind things and let things run efficiently and optimally. And that's really really necessary when it comes to the intensity of the competition. So Discord has been a favorite. I've I've used it before for gaming platforms, of course. A little uh, pleasurable guilt of mine. I love the game, and Discord's always been that platform. So having the competition on here as well, it works fantastically. Really, really cool. And thank you very much again for allowing me the opportunity to volunteer. It's always good to be able to see how it's all going. Um, and I love the international representation here. Yeah, like the international CEOs, I think it's a really good idea. Just not only for time zone reasons, it also gives a fluidity of uh, various technologies that are known in one place or another. Seeing things that are happening now from mainland China, I think it's been really cool. And just having that little bit of the international aspect of it before even getting to internationals, I think that's also a huge bonus point for the kids. I agree. Agreed. Uh, can I be a third wheel in that conversation regarding Discord? Yeah, sure, please do it. Please invite me on that meeting whenever you guys have it, because uh -huh. I want to set it up for like I can help you. And other than that, in the school also here, so that would be nice. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm. I'm no. Uh, in no means, I'm the expert in Discord, but uh, yeah, I know the basics. Yeah, that's good enough. Then we can experiment together and figure out more things as this goes on. Yeah. But okay. you've done a great job so far, Gaurav. Twenty-four-seven, pretty much troubleshooting. And when Discord went down, guys, hats off to Gaurav for keeping his cool. We we had a meeting with him like ten minutes, thirty minutes after I think Discord went down, and this guy had a backup plan ready. That's what great IT is about. Backup plans are backup plans. Yeah, thank so, you. Great job on that. All I can say is I'm living up to the stereotype. <laughs> I think it's a good thing you're in good company here. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, many of you requested the requested for me to play the the teaser from I mean the event video from last time. So here it is. Just a second. Thank you. Thank you. 
Sorry. We can see. Oh, your screen is in share. Oh, okay. Is it me or the audio went out? <laughs> yeah, I think the audio went out for me too. Or the audio went out. I believe he has a shared computer audio. Uh, he's muted himself, so the video is also mute, been muted. I think. Gaurav, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Okay, so that was the video from last time. Uh, hopefully, we get to attend a live in-person competition this time. Okay, so we are just uh, right on time to start, and uh, give we we'll, we'll start within two minutes. Good evening, everyone. I think we still don't have all the participants. Um, we'll give them another five minutes and then we will lock the meeting. Please let, your, let all your teammates know that once the meeting is locked, no one will be able to get in or get out.
Please let your teammates know we are two minutes away from locking the meeting. Even if they are presenters, we will not let them in. Hey, Gaurav, go ahead and lock the meeting. Okay, the meeting is now locked. All right. Welcome uh, to the final presentations of the 17th annual Asian Regional Space Settlement Design Competition. Um, do we have all our volunteers? Uh, if you guys can go ahead and uh, get yourself known so that we know that all our volunteers are here. Anita, are you here? Uh, Gaurav, can you unmute all the volunteers, please? Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, Abhishek, it's Parmesh, and I'm uh, so yeah, just letting you. Hey, Anita, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, I only did that like three times. <laughs> anyway, it's a sunny day here in Nassau Bay, Texas. Good morning. Good morning, Anita. Good evening to you. <laughs> Hi, Abhishek. Good to see you. Hi, Anita. Howdy. Hey. Jack's here as well. Hey. Hey, this is
this is David Chevron. I am here. Hey, thank you so much. I would personally like to thank each and every one of you for helping us making this competition a success, especially the 17th edition. Um, though this is virtual, I think we all had, um, you know, we all had a good time in it. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce each and every volunteer who has put in such a lot of work and uh, help students come up with good designs and also help us judge those designs. So I would like to start with Anita Gale. Anita, would you like to talk about yourself for a couple of minutes, please? Oh, yeah, we'll try to cut it to a couple. No, I'm not, it's not about me. It's it really, this is all about you. Um, informally in the design competition family, we call me mom of the design competition. I was there at the very beginning in 1984 um, with uh, two other co-founders. Rob Kolstad is still around, just not active in the competition. And my husband, Dick Edwards, passed away about 11 years ago. Um, and uh, if, if you looked at the basic description of what we what we conceived in 1984, we basically do the same thing. It's just we do it a whole lot better now. Um, so uh, we, we now have uh, obviously space settlement design competitions are global. We're also starting a parallel um, concept called the tournament. Um, and that's uh, if we want to have like if we would like to have more competitions in India, we could do it in the tournament concept. Um, we're just starting to prototype that in Brownsville, Texas. Um, I'm also a, um, a member of the executive committee of the National Space Society, which is a, a co-sponsor or partner, is partner would be a better word, a partner in space settlement design competitions worldwide. And the National Space Society has uh, chapters in India. Um, and you can start chapters. You can contact me if you'd like to learn how to do that. I'll get you in touch with vice president of chapters. And uh, yeah, actually you've got it. I worked on space shuttle from before it flew until after it quit flying. Uh, and then uh, ended up working uh, commercial crew, Boeing commercial crew, the Starliner, and uh, now retired from that. So I can do this more. <laughs> All right, Jack, you're up. Uh, hello, everyone. Getting my fan going. <clears throat> um, I don't see myself there, so I don't know. Well, um, anyway, um, I've been an event coordinator, a CEO, a judge. I've been doing this since about 2001. Um, I'm a senior systems engineer at Boeing. I've worked with Anita on the shuttle program and the commercial crew program. Um, getting real close to 35 years of experience. That will happen next month with Boeing. And I um, mentioned like I did the space shuttle and ISS and a number of other programs. Uh, I've done aerodynamic analysis, flight trajectory, design, system verification, and like I said, now I'm pretty much do uh, integration and systems engineering. Thank you. Dave. Well, good morning or evening as the case may be, wherever you are. So I have uh, been with the competition for, I don't know, about 15 years or so, I guess. And uh, done CEO many, many times. So uh, done red team and judging and technical training and starting Brownsville and design tournaments and a space settlement, uh, a uh, entrepreneur competition that we're testing out as well. That's uh, sort of been coming out of beta, getting ready to be able to be run full time. Well, not every event, but special events. Uh, let's see. So, and uh, I kind of got a lot of the, the techniques of having to run this virtually figured out. So um, that's been my role in the competition. I retired from NASA about eight years ago. And um, let's see, at NASA, I was, uh, well, even before NASA, I did the uh, space station proposal back in Rockwell International. So I've been through what you've been through over the last few days, uh, working on a big proposal, uh, a little different, but uh, real life part of it. Uh, actually, it represents what we do really well. So. Um, did that. I was lead for all the ISS uh, reliability, maintainability test types of things and getting exploration going. So um, that's basically my background. Thank you, David. Oh, so um, I didn't know my slide was in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, 
I'm an entrepreneur uh, and an engineer. I run several companies. Um, uh, Anita is a partner in two of my companies. And then I have another one in India that helps run the space element design competition in Asia. And we do a lot of uh, robotics and, and we do a lot of uh, educational teaching tool development here in, the, in India and also in the US. So that's a little bit about me. Haley, um, if you're with us, could you please um, introduce yourself? I don't Haley see may, us, so. I think Haley may have had to uh, be at work this morning. Okay. Uh, whenever she joins us, we'll we'll take a break and yeah, she's herself. Yeah, she'll she may try to join for a bit. Kareem, I hope you are with us. If you could go ahead and introduce yourself. I am indeed. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. Um, for those who are rocked on, all you've all been with me, and also previously in the INS SDC. Um, my background is a uh, well, mechanical engineer with aerospace as my focus. Um, air propulsion, air mechanics has been my um, my interest and my specialization. Particular interest actually on, on materials. So nickel-based super alloys is something that I've been doing a lot of during my master thesis. Um, and then I actually ended up doing a little bit of a detour and looking into sustainable energy, which I got a second, um, I've got here one second should be able to be visible now i'm not too sure if i am but uh, hello to everyone if you can i'll continue i've uh, currently started working actually now with the ssef which is a space science and engineering foundation which is based in the uk and i'm the director of the uh, europe and middle east regions the aim of the game is to set up the sdcs in both locations and um, this is new territory so for those who are going to be wanting to volunteer or get involved in some way shape or form please do let me know um, I love collaborating with the, the Asian side, looking forward to doing so with more regions as well, trying to get that international flavor as widespread as possible. And um, yeah, I have a long history with the UK, well, the SDC community in general, uh, went to the UK as well as the ISSDC in 2011, was part of the winning teams in both of them. It was a fantastic opportunity, which is why I've now got into trying to establish that in more regions, have bigger outreach and get more kids involved. So I really think this competition is a fantastic way for students to be able to develop not just technical skills, but the business know-how, working in teams, resolving conflict, presenting, idea management. The list of value propositions is endless and the way it sticks with you throughout your careers will be evident. So um, I'm a big fan of the competitions. Lovely to be here and be behind it. And if anyone has any questions regarding things, you know, career advice later on, if I can help in some way, shape or form, do let me know. Drop me a message. I'll put my email down for you guys to uh, contact me if need be. And feel free to message anytime. And that's me, Kareem. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Kareem. Uh, I hope Bibble is with us. Yeah, I don't... I don't see Whipple, so maybe he'll join, join us in a few minutes. All right. Rohan, I see you there. Can you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, everyone. This is Rohan Man. I've uh, been with Walter Aviation this time around. The not so happy CEO out there. Uh, <laughs> a little bit about myself. I am the project management leader at Boeing India Engineering, everything that falls under engineering test and technology at the Boeing India Center as project managers reporting up to me. I'm also the program manager now for the Boeing campus here in India, a 40 acre campus and working on RFPs is an everyday business now. I've been proudly a part of SSDC since December, 2019. And one thing is certain, Anita can be very devious with RFPs. There's no, there's no saying no to that. Right? That is something that is the highlight of this competition. And I think uh, it's a great experience for everyone. I've been part of tech sessions uh, a few times, red team, phone of friends, CEOs. Um, this competition is, is way beyond anything that one person can comprehend, but now has turned out to be a whole family 
of people bringing this to students all around the world. It's it's a fabulous experience, and and I love that I'm part of it from um, uh, representing Boeing India, and and volunteering with the group. Um, personally, I love anything on wheels, um, anything to do with cameras, radio waves, and I'm extremely passionate about academics and management. Uh, I believe I don't need to give you guys uh, anything other than probably my name and my picture. You guys uh, know how to stalk anyone really well than I ever could on the internet. I'm sure you guys will find me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and probably even on platforms that I didn't know I had an ID. So if you want to have conversations after this one, I'd be delighted to speak to anyone and all of you. Uh, please do reach out and to all of the teams, good luck. May the best teams win. Thanks, Rohan. I think Vipul just joined us. So Vipul, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Vipul. I'm sorry for being late. I had a bit of an emergency at work. Um, I am based in the UK and I practice here as an eye doctor. Um, I have been attached to the SSDC family, if I can say, for the past 12 years. Uh, Anita may not remember, I met her a few years ago in uh, in London for uh, the UK SDC and I told her what I do for a living and I said, Anita, when people ask me that, why do you not work in the space industry? Anita just said that you can say that SSDC is like a family and you, you don't you don't always have to do you know, for a living what the rest of your family does. So I think SSDC overall has been one of the best uh, in experiences that I've been uh, you know, attached to. And thank you as always to the whole team, Gaurav, Abhishek Bhaiya, the whole team for, you know, for running such a wonderful thing. Thank you very much for letting me be a, be a part of it. Nicole, I'd like to add something. There is research going on on the International Space Station right now to um, 3D print human retinas in space. Yeah. To, uh, yes, I did, I did see an article on the, yes, I did see an article about that, Anita. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but yes, I'm, I, I definitely do remember what you, you know, what you told me all those years ago. So I don't, I don't, I don't feel as bad anymore for not, for not working in the space, in the space industry. Thanks. Thank you so much, Vipul. Um, you know, your contribution is deeply appreciated. Anita, we have someone who is coming back to the competition after almost, um, I would say 15 years. Parikshit is back in the competition after taking a break. He and another friend of ours uh, during college time helped, helped me establish the Space Element Design Competition for Asia. So I would like Parikshit to introduce himself. Hey everyone. Uh, luckily, this time it is remote. The last time I tried to enter the competition, my flight didn't take off. Uh, it was uh, zero visibility and the plane refused to take me to the competition. So I was left in Amritsar. But Why this time, there was no camera? excuse like that. So, I'm... Uh... Okay, I'll... let's see. Do, I... Do you guys see me now? Hello, everyone. So, I'm a software development manager at Amdocs. I was... Uh... I did my graduation for computer science in Thapar University back in 2007. And... Uh... As it says, I was working with Abhishek on this and I'm so happy uh, that this is still on and I have been actually in touch with him and uh, all these years just to, you know, often check who, how it is going, who is winning, what did they build this time and all those questions. So it's uh, a lot of fun to be actually part as a volunteer now. And uh, the, I'm actually a process and operations enthusiast. I like to you know, try and do uh, that also in my work. For fun, I do a lot of outdoor activities. I'm uh, hiking, I'm often cycling or running. And uh, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to your presentations. Good luck to everyone. Thanks, Parikshat. Our next volunteer is Aniket Saraf. No, sorry. Yeah. Aniket, are you with us? Hi, am I visible? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Aniket. I'm still a student pursuing my BTEC from VIT Chennai. 
uh, I'm po- doing my B.Tech in computer science and engineering still in my second year. I've been an alumnus of the competition. I won a- a- ARSS DC back in 2018. I've been to the finals twice, but did receive the contract. I came back as a co-CEO uh, for the international round in 2020, and I've been coming back since. Currently, I'm working on for patent. I have a platform patent for my uh, messaging application. I'm working for that. I'm trying to develop it further. Maybe I'll be working on a research article as well. So yeah, that's all about me. Thank you. Thanks, Aniket. Pranav, are you with us? Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. All right. Uh, hi everyone. Sorry, my camera is not working right now, but I'm Pranam Mohan Sharma. I first participated in ARS uh, in INSS DC in 2018. I'm currently a mechanical fresher, and uh, the the skills that have uh, really helped me through this journey of SS DC have been critical thinking, um, because you know, especially people who have been in structures, you guys know how. Uh, how creative you need to be to tackle the RFP points and all the all the people who've been in management positions uh, need to have effective communication and leadership skills. So I hope you guys had a great time and look forward to seeing your presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav. Abhinav, if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I am like many volunteers here, an alum of ARSS DC from back in 2008. Um, after that, I reconnected with the competition a few years back and it has been amazing coming back and helping guide the next generation of students. It's so much fun being a CEO. This time I could not spare 72 hours. So I asked maybe red team and it was amazing going through all of your proposals and helping you work on work on the issues that you were having. And by profession, I'm an automation consultant, ed tech and automation. So as I joked during the automation technical training session, automation kind of words stuck with me for the last decade and a half. And in terms of this competition, one thing I would really like all of you to take away that this learning experience, it's gonna go with you every step of the way. Even yesterday during the red team review between the pink team and the red team, uh, one of the teams, like their 3D drawings, what they did, and I had I had the same person as a CEO, um, uh, sorry, as a president when I was CEO of a company in INSSD leader improved how he managed his 3D renderings because his 3D renderings were not done last time in INSSDC. This time he managed his resources much better and his 3D renderings were done before the red team review. That improvement he bought into himself between the two phases of the competition. And now that skill about prioritizing different things is going to be with him for the rest of your life, his life. And that's the same thing. Every one of you will have one or the other skill that will go with you for the rest of your lives. I have many, I can't even count. So. Congratulations on being here. Good luck with your presentation and have a great career ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinav. Um, Parmesh, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Uh, uh, hey, guys. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Parmesh. Um, um, so when it comes to um, like, you know, being a part of this competition, uh, this would be my uh, sixth year, uh, actually, uh, of, of being as a technical advisor. Uh, whereas at the same time, uh, I have been a part of um, Atlantis Research as a company. Um, and uh, also at the same time, I'm heading uh, an organization of uh, ISU Space Cafe India, uh, where the ISU as an acronym stands for International Space Uni- uh, University, where we are simultaneously also trying to promote uh, STEM-based education out here in India. And uh, we are also uh, promoting a scholarship called as Dr. Kalpana Chabla Scholarship, uh, under which, uh, like you know, we offer Indian uh, students, um, like you know, to come uh, and and uh, and 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 uh, be a part of the ISU um, uh, courses, uh, which again would be completely fully funded uh, uh, by our alumni. Uh, apart from that, uh, um, like you know, from an uh, educational standpoint, I have 
done my masters uh, both uh, in 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 tourism and in space studies and um, like you know and by that being said uh, my core area of expertise lies in the field of space tourism and when it comes to the competition uh, my uh, like i have a personal knack for uh, human engineer uh, human engineering and structures so yeah that's that's all i have to say thank you i wish all the teams uh, then again i want to wish all the teams all the best and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing all their presentations yeah thank you thank you parmesh kari if you are with us please if you could introduce yourself i'm not sure she is with us if she joins us i will let her introduce herself uh javier if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself hello how are you doing my name is javier gonzales um i currently teach engineering computer science here in brownsville texas at university and high school for over 25 years now in the areas of my degrees are in math science and uh in computer science engineering i've uh, worked the uh, big businesses with casio and texas instruments in the past uh worked with us intelligence as well i've been now um uh, helping with this program which i think is absolutely outstanding now for about a year and uh i think this is the most wonderful opportunity for students and now i have my own students who have graduated are now moving on into space and so forth after being exposed to this and finding a you know just as great a passion as i have um you know congratulations to all the students who are here and i'm looking forward to uh, what's about what we're about to go through right now thank you thank you ishita if she is with us Hi, um, Ishita. I'm a first year PhD student at Princeton currently. I first participated in this competition in 2015, and since 2017, I've been coming here as a volunteer. So, um, it's been a, I have a very strong bond with this competition. As somebody who's like my first time as a CEO when I came, my co-CEO got sick, and I was thrown into a deep pool all alone. as the sole ceo of my company and i think that is where i actually got to learn a lot of things about myself and everyone who's participating this year i strongly urge you to come back and volunteer for this competition because being on the other side and managing all of you we learn a lot ourselves like there's never been a year when i've been a participant and i when i've been a ceo and i haven't actually seen a change in myself which i brought back to my work currently my so i at princeton i work on computer architecture i am interested in gpus and automatic parallelism so if any of you want to talk about this please let me know um in the competition i'm mostly interested in structures and i'm always very happy to help everybody uh, my one sole advice would again be if you have time invest in this competition come back and it will definitely pay you back a lot yeah thanks ashita Leanne if you are with us if you could go ahead and introduce yourself please Hi my name is Leanne Capistran I'm a fourth year undergraduate in physics and so far I've been doing work in um radio astronomy more specifically I work on the infrastructure of the low frequency off sky monitor in Brownsville Texas and across other sites in the United States and I do uh data characterization and quality control for LIGO and I've been doing that for almost a year now and I've been doing low fasm for several years now and I'm also the secretary of the South Texas NSS chapter that we're currently trying to open up and this is my first year volunteering in the competition so good luck to everyone and it's really exciting and it's been really really interesting to see how your minds think <laughs> thanks lian um mel karen if you are with us if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself Hi everyone. Um uh, my name is Mel Karen. I'm a junior at the University of Illinois. Um I'm studying East Asian languages and cultures and computer science. Um I started doing this competition in 2014. I participated in 2014 and 2015 in Texas at the Johnson Space Center. And I also was able to volunteer at the Canadian SSDC in 2019. Um I'm still a student so I haven't done really a lot of research yet. 
Um, but I, I do like to work on my truck. I'm, I, you know, love mechanics stuff. Um, and I'm a language student. I'm also learning Russian. Um, I remember how important this competition was to me when I was a student and how, like how I've changed since then. So it's just really nice to be able to give back to this competition. Thank you. Um, Modit, if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Madhat. I'm an economics major right now. Uh, I was about to attend this competition in 2018, I think, but I couldn't due to circumstances around that event. Uh, so yeah, I really like being a CEO this year. I'm not really that much into science. I like physics a lot. I read articles about physics as well, but I don't consider chemistry to be science because there's too many assumptions in it. So I don't touch PCM with a stick. And yeah, it's, it's really fun being a CEO, seeing how different people work, coordinate between each other. And uh, all the best, everyone. Thank you, Madhat. Rishabh, if you could introduce yourself, please. Hey, am I, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Rishabh. I'm a second year engineering student, and I'm doing currently pursuing my chemical engineering from VIT Vellore. And apart from that, I'm currently working on a review article on biochar with a major focus on the clean energy application of biochar. So I have been a part of the competition since 2017. I won the uh, competition. I won the Asian region competition back in 2018. And we lost, we came short in the ISSDC 2018, but that never stopped me. Like I always wanted to come back and give back to the competition. And this is my first time as a co-CEO. And I enjoyed being on the other side for the first time, but it was also really hectic to manage uh, a group of 60 students at the same time. All the best to all of you. Thank you, Rishabh. And last but not the least, uh, Gaurav, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself. We all know he has made a major uh, contributions to the competition. All the architecture for the Discord was Discord servers were established by him. And uh, go ahead, Gaurav, please talk about yourself. Hey, everyone. I think all of you guys already know me. But uh, yeah, I'm a computer science engineer. And I'm also currently a research assistant at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And my research focus is primarily towards computer security and uh, AI research. And I'm also the technology lead at Think Robotics. So yeah, uh, just like Yushita, I was uh, a participant in 2000, 2015 and I came back as a volunteer in 2017. And since then, I think almost every single competition I've been here I've been a co-CEO, CEO assistant in the international competitions, as well as you know uh, the logistics and the um, IT IT volunteer. So yeah, all the best for the competition. Thanks, Gaurav. Uh, go ahead and put up the first presentation. Uh, Grumbo Aerospace. I think you hey, are the first presenter. Hey. How about Bruce? Yeah. Oh, Bruce, join us. Yes, Bruce is with us. Okay, give me a Sorry. second. Let Hey, Bruce. Hello. Oh, Hi. We don't have a slide. Okay. Uh, Bruce, would you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? My name is Bruce Goldfarb. Um, I'm a real estate investor and a finance guy. Um, I've been involved in the competition for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. Uh, I've been a CEO. I've um, co CEO. I've been a judge. Um, I've, uh, I'm an aerospace enthusiast. Um, I'm not a tea, but I, uh, I love it. And, um, I think that this is just an amazing opportunity for all the kids, all the young adults. Um, everybody gets addicted and it's a good type of addiction. It's the only addiction that I support. Nonetheless, good luck to everybody. Uh, these are amazing times and I hope to, once the pandemic's over, see you all again, live and in person. Thanks, Bruce. Um, hey, Abhishek, we have another volunteer, Rachna. She, she couldn't send her a slide. Rachna, if you're on the call, please, please introduce yourself. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Rachna. Um, I'm uh, currently doing my master's in psychology with an interest in neuroscience and neuroanthropology. Um, so I'm an alumni of the uh, 2014 ERSSDC, and it's my first time as a CEO here. There, there's a lot I learned uh, when I participated in it, and I hope um, you know the students participating this this time learn as much or more. 
And even though I'm not, you know, completely studying, uh, well, I'm studying the social science currently, uh, my love for science, uh, space hasn't disappeared clearly. Um, yeah, I just, I look forward to all your presentations. Thanks, Rachna. Gaurav, uh, go ahead and put up the first presentation. We should, I think we should start with our presentations. Grumbo Aerospace, please get ready to present. Greetings all. We are Grumbo Aerospace, and today we are here to present Astoria, creating history by shaping the future. Now I would like Soham Sina to start with the presentation. Hello, everyone. Let's start. Our settlement would be located... Uh, next slide. Our settlement would be located 2.915 astronomical units from the sun near the Hilda space uh, subgroup of the ecliptic comets. The reasons for choosing this location are that it has less number of asteroids, prospect of ex expansion, M-type asteroids are a large number. Um, it is also near the center of the subgroup and can also have access to mining bases in both directions. The target asteroid will, uh, will have an approximate diameter of nine kilometers as, as it has been shown below. We've also shown the location of Astoria on the map. The red line shows the orbit of Astoria. The yellow dot shows the SPS and clusters of 21, and the pink dot shows our settlement Astoria itself. Next slide. We went with choosing a large asteroid and keeping the settlement attached as Astoria would serve as an r, &R center and a maintenance hub for nearby mining facilities, which means that it's better for it to be relatively stationary to other nearby facilities in the orbit. Attaching Astoria to a large asteroid would thus save fuel for thrusters if we wanted to do that. We have our residential areas in three segmented rings. Each has one down surface. Each ring has three segments for isolation and contingency purposes. We have a space debris shield on the opposite side of the settlement that is attached to the asteroid as a second to last resort after all automations security systems fail in case of an imminent collision. Uh, we, uh, another segment uh, has been added for manufacturing and refinery, uh, refining purposes as some of those operations might require some gravity. We have eight MRO and eight standard docks on either sides of the main axle with the standard docks being on the side of the space debris shield. Next slide. The three residential rings all have the same radius of 280 meters and are all rotating at an RPM of 1.2 and provide 0.45 G gravity at the down surface. All residential segments are connected to three other segments via transport tubes with airlocks at both sides of these tubes. There are windows all over the residential segments to provide our residents with natural views of space and sunlight as well. The settlement will be attached to the asteroid by claw-like anchors coming through the end of the main axle and will be dug up into the asteroid. This will also be aided by the trusses being anchored to the surface of the asteroid with the help of beams, which would be detachable. In case of an absolutely unavoidable collision, this is, the settlement can detach itself from the, asteroid and, and, uh, from the asteroid anchoring modules and move out of the way as a last resort. Next slide. Here, we have provided a blown out candy render to demarcate the major structural components of our settlement to make it easy to understand. We have also marked the pressurized, non-pressurized and rotating, non-rotating parts respectively. The rotational interface will have ball bearings in, in between the main axle and the spokes. Transportation between these parts is enabled by a vehicle that can move on the inner side of the main axle and can change its velocity to make it zero relative to the axle and to the spokes to enable transfer of its contents between them. Next slide. Here we have provided the internal configuration of our settlement. All residential segments are identical and hence have the same zonal plan. To make it easy to understand, we have color coded our zonal plan and also mentioned the areas they would cover in the residential segment. All residential segments have a constant vertical clearance of 65 meters so as to avoid our passengers from ever getting the feeling of being inside of an enclosure. The same internal configuration will be followed at IOC and final, configura and final configurations. The industrial areas are located in both the main axle and the industrial ring mentioned before. Next slide. Here we have shown the material composition of the various types of surfaces of our settlement, like the hull, the down surface, the windows, and the debris protection with the respective thicknesses as well. Next slide. 
the, the materials would be mined that would be mined would be brought in casks from RSM bucky structures for debris protection and thermal insulation and ferronickel trusses would be subcontracted to bucky breakthrough and beam builders respectively. We have listed the operational requirements and the materials with their source, total quantity, casks needed, and also with the purpose of for which it would be used. Next slide. Automations in constructions and repairs. EMD. The EMD is the main board that would be working on the exterior of the settlement. It has four arms, each equipped with an extractor and arc welder. It is capable of exterior construction, delivery, and transport. IMD. It will be used in the interior of the construction and repairs. It, it, it is made using titanium aluminide, uh, uh, having four detachable arms for easy accessibility. All the boards are using biomorphic batteries as their primary power source. Convertible wheels with suction foot for vertical movement will be used. Next slide. The EMD and IMD bots have a cameras for a 360 view live feed of progress to humans through control rooms. Repurposing. IMD and EMD will be repurposed for maintenance and repair. This table gives the quantity and the function of the construction, uh, construction bots. Internal transportation of commodities subcontracted to drone and delivery. External transportation of commodities and robots subcontracted to zero G mobility. Next slide. Before humans arrive, uh, the construction would be led by the EMD and IMD. Initially, construction robots would arrive in special ships moving via thrusters, which would split into two units. One unit would maneuver towards the location on the asteroid where the settlement construction would start. The other unit would move diamet diametrically opposite end to the diametrically opposite end of the asteroid where the EMD bots construct a mining camp for resources. Resources from the mining camp would be sent to the uh, settlement on the opposite side by rails subcontracted to zero-g mobility. Before IOC, the EMD would be constructing the shield and the first door is after IOC. Their base will change from the asteroid to the settlement itself. The tools and technology we used in the robots will be, will be the same. Next slide. A carrier module carrying a base module and excavation module lands on the asteroid. The excavation module uh, deploys excavation bots which uh, excavate the surface of the asteroid for materials which will be then transported to the base where 3D printing bots will process the materials and start building major structural components. As soon as the uh, axle is constructed, the debris shield and the industrial ring will be also be constructed. Uh, next slide. As mentioned before, the construction would begin with when a module would arrive at the asteroid and it will split into two parts. As soon as the main, uh, the excavation modules would be deployed and, both, and bots and storage and transporting facilities as well. The excavation, uh, as soon as the main axle is constructed on the opposite end of the asteroid, the debris shield and industrial rings would also be constructed. This is followed by the construction of the first residential segment and then the, uh, constitutes the, uh, the settlement of the IOC. Next slide. Then the second and third residential segments are also constructed in the same fashion and all the segments are connected to one another via transport tubes. Casks will be repurposed to make offices in the residential segments. At this, at this point, the uh, final configuration has been reached and the contract is ready for handover. Now I would like to hand over to Ishika Jain. Could we have the next slide, please? Um, so the subcontractors used during construction include Holy Moly, Ro uh, Rock Donald, Large Print, Zero G Mobility, Beam Builders, Bucky Breakthroughs, and Orbitly Communications, with their respective start dates being mentioned here. Facilities have been provided to every subcontractor that we are employing in the main axle, mostly as mentioned in, as shown in the diagram here with the key pre um, presented by its side. Torso to me has been provided an area in the spokes for full gravity. Blown away has been provided area in the residential uh, segment for pressurization and waste product has been provided area in the um, and, uh, pressurization and gravity. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a list of all the subcontractors we will be um, employing, as well as the facilities we will be providing them for them to function efficiently to provide them with the services we require. Uh, next slide, please. The entry and exit points of the settlement are placed at two parts near the debris shield and near the asteroid where the fuel tanks are. There are two types of docks we have, the MRO docks, which have a an opening of 12 by 12 meters and a depth of 15 meters and the standard docks which have a, 
an opening of five by five meters. The arrows show the direction of approaching ships. Cargo and passengers can be received from both of these docks. Uh, and large ships can dock, like Cassandra's can dock nearby so as to allow for refueling and passengers can be handled by space dogs. Next slide, please. So um, on our docks, uh, they are arranged in a configuration of two rings of four docks each. Our maintenance, repair and overhaul docks close into a major overhaul center where ships, uh, where major overhaul repair and modification of ships is taken care of. The MRO docks also, con uh, also have a dock bot which can aid in refueling movement as well as repair of these ships. The standard docks uh, receive passengers through various spaceships as well as our space tugs. Next slide, please. The extended MRO services are aided by the dock bot. In the MRO docks, uh, we are receiving manuf manufactured power directly from the manufacturing segment. Uh, the dock is also connected through the track and, to the track and port system, which allows for passengers to be transported directly to the residential segments. This track and port system is a pressurized port, which can transport up to 25 people at once. Um, and it is pressurized. Uh, space tugs have been provided to assist disabled uh, ships. Each space tug can carry one cask and up to 40 people at once. And this is manufactured in our, um, in our manufacturing segment as explained in the next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So our manufacturing facility have a total, um, previous slide, previous slide, the one with the manufacturing. Yeah, this. Uh, the manufacturing facilities have a total area of 200,000 square feet, uh, 200,000 meters square and are present in two gravity levels in, uh, in the main axle where there is no gravity and in the um, torus. Um, manufact the refining of materials is subcontracted to Rock Donald using litigation limiters, which aids in our construction process. Uh, the industrial segment basically produces four kinds of, um, of, provi of provisioning. First is the provisioning required by mining camps as identified um, as medicines, clothes, furniture, food, spare mining equipment, which they will be requiring as well as boats to aid the construction. And the research equipment and processed materials. Equipment to aid science activities includes uh, satellites, robot probes, uh, remote sensing equipment. Um, Parts are also manufactured for the repair of ships as well as space tugs are produced. Our fuel depot services um, um, are um, manufactured liquid hydrogen and liquid, uh, liquid oxygen. Uh, there's someone in the background. Um, the fuel is stored in fuel tanks as present uh, as shown in the structure and at the MRO docks to aid in refueling. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to hand on over to Siddharth Karg to explain the safety from debris. So here we show the safety from debris mechanism. Uh, the systems for detection that we have used are the infrared telescopes, which would instantly measure the size of the debris or asteroid. The, uh, these even work if the debris is not optically bright. The second system that we used is the radar system that would measure the unbalanced thermal and the optical variation of surrounding debris and will alert us of threats. The impact probability calculation that we have used will use error ellipse of nearby asteroids and will be monitored constantly by the IR telescopes. It will show where the collision impact probability is more. The systems for combating collision uh, are two on board, uh, the primary one and the contingency for that. Uh, the primary uh, uh, system is the small rockets that are launched towards the debris that would deploy a safety net. The net would be made up of silicon bucky structures that would absorb the impact energy of the asteroid or debris and uh, decelerate it. The contingency for, the sh uh, for this is the shield on the structure that would prevent any debris hitting the settlement. It will be made up of stainless steel and will be repaired by the exterior construction board. Next slide, please. Here we show the human controls and the intervention. The intervention will be required when the asteroid size is more than 400 meter. On the right, we can see, uh, see the uh, table which shows the threat level and the size of the asteroid uh, depicting the threat level, uh, as well as the systems that will be used. 
uh, the operators that would be in the control room will like, accelerate the settlement away from the asteroid's path via the thrusters. As the last resort, the residential segments could detach themselves from the settlement in case it is destroyed using rotational thrusters. In the figure uh, below, we can see the control rooms as well as the control panel for MRO operations. Next slide, next slide, please. Here we show the control rooms that provide access to vital data and visual feed uh, with round the clock surveillance. They have biometric locks and workstations, ensuring exclusive access to authorized personnel. The number of operators working uh, all through the day, uh, all, uh, all the weeks, are uh, 21 in number. Uh, the table below shows the types of control room, which are the main control room, the gas management control room, and the debris control room, with the area and the location specified. In the figure on the right, we uh, show the control rooms uh, made by Palash and uh, the uh, control panels uh, that will show this uh, system of debris um, management. Next slide, please. The warehouses are located in the main axle containing 2,500 cash arranged against the wall in compartments in stack of two. Uh, the uh, warehouse also contains ware bots, uh, which moves cash to and from compartments. There is also a clamp belt, which transport cask in various places of the settlement. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the warehouse will be uh, containing manufactured ship components, along with commodities to be supplied to ships. Uh, it will also contain food, air, and excess materials. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, the authorization that we have on board utilizes ECDH and AES encryptions. It will indicate uh, cryptographic, uh, cryptographic systems and uh, the levels that have been provided about are alpha, beta, and gamma, whose security levels have been uh, de defined in the table, which are uh, um, respectively palm geometry recognition, retina, voice, and face recognition, and use of VAN and DNA mapping. The business and production uh, on board uses machine learning and AI, which can manage all the files and assist in handling and managing timelines and financial processes. Next slide, please. The contingency plans on board are depicted in the table, uh, which are hardware and AI malfunctions of boards, fire, electric fires, power failure, medical emergency, and depressurization. Uh, whose threat classification has been mentioned and uh, on the figure uh, on the right. Next slide, please. The networks and security on board uses encrypted DH384 and uh, have elastic cache server clusters used for faster caching of data. The privacy and protection of personal data uses SSH keys and, are, uh, and utilizes 2048-bit RSA fingerprinting to maintain its high standards of security. On the right, we can uh, see the network that uh, is used on board. Next slide, please. The communication on board can be classified into two, that is the external and the internal. For the external communication, orbit link communication will be used that will provide antennas with a capacity of 4 TVPS. Antennas are located uh, on the um, transport uh, junction uh, that is in the axle uh, with the ultra high frequency being used in case of asteroid dirt intervention with a theoretical speed limit of 20 Mbps. The internal communication uh, device uh, is the smartwatch, which uh, wirelessly connects, uh, connect, uh, connects via 7G. Uh, the theoretical speed limit here is 800 to 1000 Gbps. The time delay between Earth and Astoria uh, is re um, reduced by elastic cache servers clusters to analyze the search history of the user and pre-download all the recommended files from the Earth internet to avoid time delay. Next slide, please. Yeah, so for the atmosphere and climate, would be it would be subcontracted by stuff of life and clean up your rack. Same climate and pressure is maintained throughout the settlement, and there are 36 total casts of air. Below in the table, we have listed the air composition with percentage, partial pressure, and total mass. For the electrical power generation, our primary source of electrical pro electricity production would be SPS, which has been subcontracted to Dogaldine, and a total capacity of our SPS system is 46,384 kilowatt, and there are uh, and there are 205 number of such satellites. The TINAs would be subcontracted by Fletcher Constructor and the subcontractor litigation limiters would be helped developing the communication. For the secondary sources of electricity production, we have 20 radioisotope thermal electric generators, RTG, located on spokes. 
and for power backups we have supercapacitors located in the main axis on the right on the right hand side we have shown the electricity requirements in the table form next slide please. now coming to the food production aeroponics with reverse osmosis would be used for food production for meat and dairy we would be doing cell culture there are three vertical stacks in total coming with a total area of 900000 meter square on the left hand side we have shown the food quantities uh, on the right hand side we have shown the food quantities and the initial amount needed as well as the number of initial casts we have a made, we have made an agrobot which would have a storage container in the middle and four claws on top excess food is produced and processed which helps provision need need of visiting space craft on the right hand side we have shown the table of food quantities with initial amount initial casts and also the excess quantity of food produced next slide please for the internal transportation we have two vehicles one is the cycles which is the personal mode of transport and the second one is the autobus for public transport inside the settlement the road the road layout has been shown with the proper width next slide please no one more. uh so for the solid waste management it would be subcontracted by tossit to me waste products and bottom cleaners and tossit to me would be given in giving an area of 30000 square meter in the residential areas and the landfill area would be 1500 meter square which is enclosed in the basement of building in residential area the water management would be subcontracted by the staff of life and clean up your act there would be four tanks of 86 meter cube to store back of water and below we have the show, we have shown the routing of the water storage water storage and electricity and on the right hand side we have the table of the water requirements now ahmed would take over thank you next slide please okay so we have designed astoria in a way that it provides its residents and visitors with the finest living environment and gives access to all kinds of uh, luxuries a modern infrastructure can support astoria also wishes to provide its residents with a long line of sight so that they are able to observe astoria in all of its beauty The community is built taking into consideration the needs and requirements of the residents. Medical facilities are centrally located to improve accessibility, while small infirmaries are located near residential areas for immediate attention. Sports centers as well as other facilities are equidistant to the neighborhoods to improve ease of access. As we can see on the community plan, there is a pathway for roads also provided, and on the bottom left, the two figures show the windows that will be present on the hull side structure to provide a prominent view of space and natural sunlight. the sunlight reflectors would be subcontracted to mirror image next slide please for the uniqueness of neighborhoods uh, uh, we have divided our community into two neighborhoods with one being a family friendly neighborhood with uh, activities such as carnivals playgrounds skating parks and etc whereas the other neighborhood is occupied by mostly single people so it has a higher number of gyms cafes bars and clubs healthy food options also counseling and therapy next slide please our community includes a variety of amenities along with recreation spots to ensure the best comfort and care healthcare facilities include hospitals and infirmaries hospitals will make use of med bay scans for diseases and surgery bots will be present for precision surgery to maintain the residents fitness and low gravity and prevent muscle atrophy astoria pro provides sports centers and gymnasiums training with advanced resistive exercise device is uh, recommended spas and yoga centers are also included for hol holistic development Parks and community centers provide open spaces for interactions among residents, uh, and uh, we also have a community center which will have youth and family facilitation centers, also meeting halls and concert halls. Next slide, please. The entertainment facilities at Astoria include the Space Bar, the sensory uh, which uh, will have uh, uh, it includes low gravity activities such as paintball, volleyball, and trampoline park with an obstacle course. Sensory deprivation pods will also be present uh, to provide peace of mind, and uh, we also uh, have an activity called Cosmic Connect, which is an event where people of all cultures will gather and be able to sell display uh, traditional items by setting up stalls. The, uh, restaurants, cafes, and bars are also present for relaxation and bonding of the passengers. and uh, in a, at astoria we have an online education system with research centers in each segment dedicated for practical and research based activities astoria also provides a variety of consumer goods to its residents uh, such as office bots which are subcontracted to bots for you next slide please we for rest and recreation we have divided into 
two categories one being the physical activities and one being for relaxation for the physical activities we have uh, bu bu bubbly which in which players will be wearing zorbas and bouncing off the walls and bashing into each other which is a great way to release stress gaming rooms including games like laser tag with drones uh, making use of uh, holograms and uh, laser retreat will also be present contact sports such as rugby lacrosse and hockey will uh, be made use of and mountain climbing uh, 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 facilitated by 70 holograms will be used for relaxation we have an amusement park with 70 hologram technology which features a simulation of uh, forest zoos and displays the seven wonders of the earth uh, for uh, a nostalgic uh, experience so we also have a sensory deprivation pods for the miners uh, which provide a peace of mind to ensure that the residents are not being displaced by the miners Uh, we have contact sports which release endorphins and let off steam our configuration of residential facilities provide a separate neighborhood for both miners and permanent residents to ensure that the residents are not being annoyed by the miners next slide please For laboratories and clean rooms, we have 27 research rooms at Astoria with three different gravity levels and an area of 1580 uh, meters square. These are used to study minerals, soils, and manufacturing processes and assay of ores. In case of discovery of life form, uh, a researcher can choose to stay during uh, a, a researcher can choose to stay during which the lab will be sealed and a human can be sustained for four weeks on the food and water that is present. If the researcher wants to leave, personal protective equipment can be used by the researcher. And uh, after that, the human protocol has to be followed, in which humans are sanitized in airlocks as spoken. In the duration, the spoke is sanitized. Human uh, quarantine in the room present. Next slide, please. For house designs, uh, our houses at Astoria have uh, you make use of IoT and AI for home automation. The home boss is subcontracted to boss for you. We'll have a total number of fourteen thousand eight fifty houses in our community with a maximum height of twenty two meters. Wheelchair ramps will be provided for specially able people, and all the houses will have a sixty five meter vertical clearance above them. On the top right, there is a community plan which only shows uh, the housing facilities uh, in our community, uh, showing the residential, transient, and hotels. uh on the top left is a chart for the uh, community uh, commodities required per person per year at astoria uh we have a type a house which will be a temporary lodging for scientists we will have 600 of those and each will be uh, each will occupy an area of 1350 square feet next slide please the type b house will be uh, the type b and c houses are for permanent residents the type b house will have 9000 of those and each will occupy an area of 1550 square feet the type c house we will have 1800 of those in our community and each will occupy an area of 1900 square feet the floor plans and the exterior designs of both the uh, house types are present on the screen uh, next slide please Uh, we will also have hotel rooms uh, designs for short term visitors uh, we'll have a type 1 single hotel room and a type 2 suite hotel room for the single hotel room we'll have 1500 of those and each will occupy an area of 515 square feet whereas for uh, the suite hotel room we'll have 1500 of those as well but each of those will occupy an area of 860 square feet uh, next slide please to enhance the ability uh, at astoria a smart wearable will be the primary communication device it will make use of broad set data set of health related crisis and give uh, sos signals with exact area medbay uh, will also be used which is a scanner which scans the body and provides mri uh, images and is also capable of performing precision surgeries uh, and also able uh, to make 3d printed organs for home ai home uh, the bots are subcontracted to bots for you and uh, it monitors all house activities and provides all the basic information like alerts and temperatures next slide please for uh, the community computing assets uh, the availability of virtual work areas which run on centralized computer networks uh, are present and convenience is ensured by option of remote access hybrid firewall and encryption through uh, elliptic curved or diffie helmet cryptography will be used to secure the networks on the bottom left is a table showing the computing assets in each room such as research labs offices and homes and on the top right is uh, the types of availability bots and ai and their quantity the home office and community assistant uh, robots will be subcontracted to bots for you and will do maintenance tasks like cleaning laundry dishes etc next slide please
For our structure, we'll have three major tori uh, for the resident, uh, three major residential tori, which are further segmented with three separate habitable volumes, providing ample space for the accommodation of inhabitants. The two separate living volumes of uh, one tori will be capable of accommodating the entire population of that particular tori, tourist in case of an emergency, and a temporary housing will be subcontracted to blown away. Uh, airlocks will be present uh, uh, as, seen, as seen on the bottom right of the screen. Airlocks are present at both the ends of the spokes and the transportation tubes. Next slide, please. Airlocks will also be present at the entrance points of the docks. Uh, for spacesuits, uh, for extravehicular activity, uh, for inspection, repair work, and research outside the settlement, we'll have 22,000 spacesuits. And for intervehicular oh, activity, we'll have 20,500 spacesuits. Uh, for our spacesuits, we'll have PLSS, which helps in proper functioning. Micrometeor and debris protective fabrics will be subcontracted to Bucky Breakers. And our spacesuits will be subcontracted to extreme survival technologies. Next slide, please. Now I would like Ish uh, Ishika to continue and explain uh, the schedule and costing. Thank you. Um, research has begun as soon as the contract is awarded in February of 2081. Research lasts for approximately six years, after which the initial infrastructure is uh, set up to help speed up uh, the rest of the construction process. Triangles indicate major milestones like the end of research, the, uh, the setup of initial infrastructure, completion of IOC, the, first, the end of first expansion, and the completion of second expansion, as well as uh, uh, when the uh, settlement is ready for handover. The settlement uh, is ready for handover in June of, 94, in June of 2094. The speed of construction is achieved by using a large number of bots in tandem with uh, appropriate human intervention. Next slide, please. So the settlement will cost about $2.246 trillion. Most of these costs will be made up by the uh, materials in the settlement, which will be about $2 trillion. Foundation Society will be extended, extending separate contracts to um, to all the subcontractors for the uh, purposes listed below. The cast, which cannot be, um, the cast brought in, shipped uh, to the construction site, which cannot be sourced from the asteroid itself, are 28,000, which contain the material, food, water, air, as well as the consumables. The yearly costs uh, of the settlement are indicated in a table below. These rem uh, remain relatively low in the first five years, due, uh, as only research is going on them. Next slide, please. The automations in the settlement, which will aid the construction, uh, will cost about $232 trillion, uh, billion over all three of the uh, construction phases. This will be made by, majorly by the construction bots, EMD and the IMD. The miscellaneous costs will be the cost of setting up the living quarters, community, agriculture, research labs, among other things, and will total about $37 billion. Uh, the cost of the transport provisions, including the docks, the uh, uh, the cycles, the autobus, and the space tugs will uh, will total thirty five billion dollars. Again, incurred mostly in the first um, phase of this uh, construction, as uh, docks are set up. Then, the cost of employees uh, throughout this will be about five point um, five billion dollars. Again, mostly in the first phase, as um, research will happen. Then, next slide, please. So Astoria grows along uh, as you uh, as the foundation societies needs to. As in future, large ships like Cassandra's will drop. These ships can drop near the MRO docks. The fueling of these ships will be done by the dog bot present in the MRO docks only. And the passengers from these ships will be transferred through space tugs, which are um, the manufacturing pro provisions can be um, expanded for future. Uh, and be developed to make spacecraft from nearby asteroid material. Research and automations will help increase the uh, efficiency of these manufacturing processes. The spaceships which will be um, manufactured will be used to provide medical services to injured miners and can also be used for exploration, for tours, uh, for recreational tours, research and mining. Area can be leased to subcontractors to set up their bases to increase their reach into the asteroid belt. And people may lease houses for work from vacation careers in the future. Thank you. This was um, Grumbo Aerospace, and this was our, uh, our vision of your Astoria.
Thank you, Brambo Aerospace. Over to the volunteers for Q and A. Time starts now. Over to the judges. Over All right. The and per tradition, uh, Nita asked the first question <laughs> to start the clock. Um, so I, I'm looking uh, very early in your presentation, both at pages two and three. And um, so we have a, um, well, let's see, we're, we're in an area with ecliptic comets. I'm, I'm not sure what that means, but what I, that's on page two. But what I know about comets is uh, they can come at you from pretty much any direction. And yet there's a well, you're protected on both ends, on one end by the metallic asteroid to which you're attached. The other end, you have a debris shield. And now the, the RFP did not ask for a debris shield because things are coming from every direction. So how was the, uh, wh why is the debris shield only in, in one spot? I'm, I mean, it can, debris can be from anywhere. <laughs> um, so the primary reason to have the debris shield in the front was the tortoises uh, the spokes of the tortoises will be exposed to the incoming asteroids. So they are a weaker part of a rotating uh, uh, type of a thing. So the, uh, the area is protected by the debris shield and uh, our hull is capable of uh, taking hits, but uh, it's better to have a secondary flash uh, to keep us. So, so, that. so aren't, aren't your views of sunlight uh, out, out the ends, the windows there. So, so instead of having views of, of the sun and space, you're going to have the view of the inside of the debris shield. It looks like we're we're blowing a requirement. Okay, next next question, please. Um, actually, we will be using mirror image to reflect sunlight, that, so that will be, not be a problem. Okay, that's uh, reflected is not a natural view. <laughs> okay, there's a problem with interpretation there. Thank you. Next question, please. Yeah, I'd like to ask one on the uh, one is is your power? Did you say you were using solar power satellites? Yeah. Okay, and where where does the receiving antennas, the rectenna, the rectennas for the solar power satellites? I didn't uh, see them. Yeah, the, they they did, they did show rectenna somewhere. Uh, where was kind of on the outside. Oh, I, I, if you look on page three, it says rectenna. It's kind of like the outsides of the tori. Outside which means of the... It, it, it curved the wrong way, actually, for being okay. receiving. Yeah. Well, let's see. So, where are the solar power satellites located, and how much? How many of them are there? Um, so there are two hundred and five of them, and they're going to be uh, cross, uh, clusters of twenty-one on the same orbit as Astoria. So that they have, uh, they are less prone to being hit by comets as the number of uh, comets slash asteroids as there are less asteroids in the path. Okay, and, and how did you come up with two hundred and five solar power satellites? It seems like a lot. Um, we looked into research papers and how powerful uh, SPS could be, and um, the highest number that we found in theoretical uh, papers was uh, thirty thousand, and we assumed that we get up to a nice two hundred. Uh, kilowatt range by the time of okay. 2018. Okay, so so we have a hundred megawatt solar power satellite at Earth Moon L1 uh, from mining operations from way back when uh, that first started. Seems like 226 kilowatts per solar satellite, even even derated for going all the way out to the asteroid belt, seems extremely low. Go ahead. I think there's way too many satellites. I got a question. I may have missed it, um, but you, uh, I like the little picture that's showing up there. SR7 actually identifies my question very well. Okay, so you've got this uh, torrids that are rotating. How are you counteracting the torque on the asteroid? Oh, we have maneuvering thrusters on the asteroid, uh, which were placed. Oh, if you do, did, did I miss that? Can you take me to that page? Um, could you go to the page? Um, so, so could you answer that question? Um, which page is that? Uh, yeah, actually, I think it's the uh, next or next to next. Could you go to the next page, please? Uh, the next after this. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Sorry, it's our fault actually. In our uh, render, we couldn't really show those thrusters uh, there, so uh, that's our. That's okay, our so they don't exist. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Next question. Um, they actually do exist. They've been mentioned in the documentation uh, near the safety from debris and automation. So since we're on on this, oops, I've just got to notice my internet connection is unstable. Since we're on this page right now, um, it, we, what what is the, I'm not sure if you're going to understand this question, what is the direction of travel in the orbit? Um, so the debris shield uh, will be put towards the orbit, like towards the forward of the orbit. Yeah, like which, which part which part of the settlement is pointing into the velocity vector on the orbit? Uh, I guess it's the frontal shield that we have. Say again, please. Um, the frontal shield that we have. Okay, the shield is pointing yeah. into the velocity vector. Which means the rectennas for receiving the power from the solar power satellites are not pointing at the solar power satellites. And in, mm -hmm. indeed, on, on one side, the asteroid pre prevents any power from getting to the settlement at all. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was kind of where I was going to try to go with that. Give that a little more time. Uh, go back okay. to Jack's question for just a sec. The rotation, which, which, what directions do the, what rotates in what direction here in this view? I didn't see any direction of rotation indicated anywhere in the drawing. Was it indicated? <clears throat> um, it, sorry, it may not be in the presentation, Dave, but if you look at um, the screen well, for well, well, participant. Well, yeah, hang on. SR7 has got a, a little animated video going. Oh, uh, OK. All right, let's see that animated yeah. video. Yeah. Um, it's actually not uh, the actual It's not part of the presentation. OK, OK, OK. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. They're all rotating in the same direction, which is going to be creating a, a lot of torque and, uh, as it goes around um, the, the actual the year. rotation is in, uh, it's not accurate because um, we didn't thought no, that we were going to no, be no. putting this animation, but yeah. Well, well, you know, if you if you had torque going in opposite directions, you would uh, counteract some of the, that torque. Yeah. It's going to change the angle as you. It's going to try to keep the uh, keep the settlement axis in the same direction, pointing the same direction in in absolute space as you're going around the sun. Anyway, okay. We we can do two more questions. I mean, really quick. I was just looking at your uh, tech RP.5.3 slide 43. You don't need to go there. I was just wondering why uh, you were still using gigahertz processors, considering we're in the quantum bit era already, and we're already looking at uh, uh, 1,200 qubit machines by uh, 2022. Um, and the uh, storage, there's only a difference of magnitude of 10 compared to where we are now, where what you're showing, considering we're 60 years into the future. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, uh, this seems a little bit antiquated, well, definitely antiquated uh, for tech, computer tech. I'm sorry, uh, look into that. I've got, Abhishek, I've got more, one more quick one, and then we can give it back to Nita. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, page 23, please. All right, so I, I really like your layouts of your control centers and the things that you're looking at and the displays and everything. I think they're really wonderful, and your notations are good. I'm looking at the picture in the upper right-hand section that says dock view. I'm so glad to know that Boeing is well and alive in 2091. Um, that picture should be noted, by the way. That's a CST 100 docking to the ISS. Go ahead, Anita. Oh, yeah. That, um, so the uh, source of that image should have been, there, there, there were a few images here which uh, probably should have had their sources uh, listed. Yeah. Yeah, good eyes, uh, Jack. That's almost as good as seeing uh, my former boss in some of the uh, spacesuit drawings. Oh, crap, my phone's ringing. <laughs> uh, hey, well, it's easy to it's easy to see your own babies, you know. 
Yeah, it is. Like, it's when you design these things like base stations and CTS, is a good shot, Jay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Grumbo. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, we're going to use, since we get a lot of background noise, um, we're going to mute everyone. Hey, I'm sorry. Um, oh, hello? I, I... Okay, so um, we've muted everyone. Now the next presenters, in fact, all, all, the, all the next teams, could you, all the presenters, we need you to follow a, a new naming convention. We need all the presenters to start their names with a P followed by the name of their company. So we know who to unmute when they're presenting. And that way we will be able to reduce background noise that, ha that was plaguing the previous uh, presentation. So all the presenters, please go ahead and rename yourself with, a, with your name starting with a P followed by a hyphen, followed by the name of the company and then your name. So if you guys can go ahead and do that, Gaurav will individually unmute uh, the next presenters. And the next presenters are Dugaldine. So Dugaldine, please, can you go ahead and prepare your name so we can then unmute you specifically and start the presentation? And, and, so and by actually, the way, I, I apologize for my phone ringing there. I've, I've got it turned off now. Uh, sir, actually, we don't have an option to rename. Is that option disabled? Try now. Try now. Now you can rename yourselves. Dugaldang, if you guys can go ahead and uh, change your name, change your names. Please make sure your background noise is the minimum. All right, Dugaldine, um, I think you're ready to present. We have unmuted all the Dugaldine presenters. Gaurav, put up the slides, please. Uh, we'll start at your queue. We'll start at your queue. Uh, actually, we're sitting together, so we can't be unmuted together. So you guys should mute yourselves. Just make sure that one person has your microphone on and everyone else mute yourself and switch off the speakers. Okay, we'll start at your queue. You're good to go. You can start. The earth is a cradle for humanity, but humankind cannot stay in the cradle forever. Good morning and evening to all the uh, Foundation Society members. My name is Shubham Agarwal, and I'm the president of Dogaldine Astro Systems and Flectel Constructors. We present to you the first settlement built in the asteroid belt, Astoria. Next slide, please. This is what the external configuration of a settlement will look like at the initial operating capability. The different volumes that a structure consists of includes an observatory for viewing as well as recreational purposes. For the residents, four antennas, two each for communication and power transmission and heat radiators all over the settlement to let out excess heat. Apart from that, we have cargo and passenger, uh, we have a cargo and a passenger port each catering to cargo and passenger traffic respectively. The residential tourist that houses people 
staying at Astoria is divided into three sections via airlocks and has windows on both sides to provide natural views and direct sunlight to residents. The multipurpose torus caters to the agricultural needs of the residents as well as the recreational opportunities for the arriving miners. Uh, a hybrid port serves the, uh, actually the screen share shows a clock. Excuse me. The screen share is showing a clock. Just a second, hold on. Sorry for that, guys. You guys will be given extra time. Go ahead. A hybrid port serves the twin purposes of maintenance, repair, overhaul, as well as the docking for ships carrying miners coming for rest and recreation. The industrial unit provided is divided internally into four sections, serving the purpose of manufacturing, storage, research, and refining of materials, and all of these units are connected by a central axle. The rotation and pressurization configuration of each of these components have been presented by abbreviations with only the two tori having artificial gravity. At IOC, not all of the internal areas will, uh, there's some background noise. Not all of the interior, uh, interior areas will have been constructed. Areas that are partially, uh, partially functional internally have been depicted by a blue color. Next slide, please. At full operational capability, Astoria holds the ca capacity to accommodate 18,000 people. We have provided an, uh, a different exterior, exterior view for that configuration. This is due to the fact uh, this settlement can hold 18,000 people compared to the 6,000 at IOC due to the fact that all three sections of the residential torus will be functional, the agricultural volume will be utilized to its full potential, and so will the industrial unit. Next slide, please. So uh, we have provided the artificial gravity provided in the residential torus as well as in, as well as in the uh, multi-purpose torus. In the residential torus, we have chosen 0.5G because it is the maximum gravity which we, which we could have given in the permissible range closest to the gravity present on Earth. For the multi-purpose torus, we have decided to provide 0.38G because the plants can even survive in less gravity. Uh, the interface between rotating and non-rotating sections uh, are being formed by ball bearings. We haven't used magnetic ball bearings because the settlement uh, is being made by metals which are magnetic in nature. The raw materials for those will be uh, sourced from H-type and M-type asteroids and the lubricant will be MOS2. Uh, our settlement will be located at a distance of 25 km from an M-type asteroid so that it is at a sufficient distance for uh, proper mining, as well as uh, not, to, not to be too close to it, to block its views uh, and be safe from the asteroid. Next slide, please. The ports are the entry and exit locations to our settlement. Passenger port will be the entry exit point of passenger carrying ship, while cargo ports will be for ships carrying cargo other than mining goods. The hybrid ports will be used for MRO, as well as a docking space for miner ship. Miner ship require MRO services will head towards the MRO region and the miners coming for RNR will park this ship directly in the docking space. There is provision for temporary lodging in the hybrid port terminals for workers whose ships are undergoing MRO. MRO is carried out by automated system and spare parts and fuel, and fuel are stored in the MRO region itself. Next slide, please. Let's have a look at various construction material used for the settlement. We have two types of material layers on the exterior hull of the structure, an opaque layer of thickness 11.5 feet and a transparent layer in windows of thickness 10 feet. Materials like bucky shield and graphene will be used for protection from debris and materials like bucky thermo and silica aerogel will be used for thermal insulation. Structural strength will be provided by bucky strong and inver alloy in opaque layers, bucky refract in transparent layers. We will have a layer of bucky joint between each layer as an adhesive. Casts will be repurposed to form interior structures. Next slide, please. The residential torus divided into three sections, 
each having a capacity of 6,000 people, catering to the need of overall 18,000 people. It will have six spokes to provide more stability to the overall structure. Another, another one is multipurpose storage, specially designed for agricultural and recreational activities. The subcontractor toss it to me also houses the landfill required by it. The elliptical cross section of the residential and the multipurpose tor tori helps save material cost by increasing the down surface area to vertical clearance ratio. A minimum of 120 feet vertical clearance is provided, which will be a pleasant change for the residents who, who work mostly in claustrophobic conditions. Next slide, next slide please. These are the design and layout of industrial unit. This will be divided into four sections for manufacturing of goods, storage, refining, and research purposes. The manufacturing as well as storage area is divided into two halves, pressurized and non-pressurized. The manufacturing section layout consists of fire station, biogas generation, etc. Certain areas have been allocated to subcontractors for their services. Next slide, please. A settlement will be located near an M-type asteroid greater than 80 km in diameter in a circular orbit around Sun at a distance of 2.8 AU. The distance of a settlement from the asteroid is approximate 25 km. There is no upper bound to the size of the asteroid because the bigger, the better, as it will ensure ample construction material and will ensure protection from debris to some extent. Next slide, please. So, uh, our settlement will be built in three steps up to IOC. In the first step, we uh, build basic prerequisites like the antenna and the satellites for communication and power transmission uh, for the SPS satellites. We also uh, make the binding refining bases on the asteroids and the antennas and network of satellites for basic communication and power supply. In the second stage, we move forward with building the actual and uh, axle of the structure and moreover expand on building the antennas, the exterior of the residential torus, and the industrial units. Uh, we also build one port of one port each of the hybrid cargo and passenger port. We do not start any internal construction construction at this stage. In the phase three, we build the observatory, the exterior of the multipurpose torus, and many more such sections, which would allow us to achieve IOC at this stage. At this stage, you would be able to house 6,000 people. Can we move on to the next slide? Oh, I also, uh, I, I also would like to point out that we, we would also be uh, using jigs in, in the uh, construction step two itself to start making these structures. In, um, these are the expansion st stages which we have given here. We, are, we have given three expansion stages. In each expansion stage, stage we have uh, increased the uh, capacity of a settlement by, build, by building partly the interior part of the settlement and partly the exterior part of the settlement. Um, also, we have also started building the, uh, started the mining operations, the uh, agricultural operations, and many such operations which, uh, which would be uh, given to us by the subcontractors. Um, we will be contacting subcontractors uh, through the litigation limiters uh, subcontractor. Um, um, now we move on to the next slide. We can move on to the next slide. Asteroid mining. So for asteroid mining, uh, we have given a very convenient table listing out all the different types of uh, mining operations we need to do the subcontractor needed for it, and also the location and the, the commencement of the uh, subcontractor. Can, we can move on to the next slide. Right. So the materials and equipment. The following table lists out the operational materials which are sourced from asteroid or are being subcontracted. For the transportation of material, Grumbo Jumbo will be subcontracted from Grumbo Aerospace. The contract will be facilitated by litigation limiters.
Next slide, please. Or oh, atmosphere and climate. The table above shows how various aspects of atmosphere and climate will be maintained. For, in, for instance, removal of heat will be done by panel radiators. Coming to the air composition, in the residential volume, the oxygen level has to be higher than that of Earth's atmosphere due to the rel uh, relatively lower pressure, but not too high as it poses the risk of increased flammability. Similarly, in the agricultural volume, carbon dioxide levels have been kept comparatively higher for the plants to strive. A flow chart depicts how the cycle works. Next slide, please. Food production. Food production will take place in the multi-purpose stores in the agricultural sector. The aeroponic and rabbit and chicken based systems will be subcontracted by Garden Ago. We will have the ag agricultural area divided into three parts with the shown temperatures and humidities so that we have the production of different crops simultaneously. We will produce three months food in every cycle. Next slide, please. Power generation. Based on the trade study, we chose SPS provided by Dugger Dye National Systems that will transport power wirelessly using wireless power transmitters and receivers by flectal constructors. Our power requirement is 30 megawatt at IOC and 150 megawatt at full operational capability. We have vanadium vanadium redox flow batteries that will have at least uh, 15 megawatt uh, at all times. We have also provided the power that is necessary for essential operations of the settlement during power failure whose power supply will be fulfilled by the batteries. We will provide five SPS at IOC, which will provide 50 megawatt and 20 SPS at full operational capability, which will provide 200 megawatt of power. We have also provided hydrogen fuel cells as a major backup power source. And hydrogen will be sourced from electrolysis uh, done using the power. And we have tried uh, obtaining best from waste. And so we are using methane, which is obtained from decay of waste in a landfill uh, as biofuel. This is provided by Tosset Me. We have also used piezoelectronics in elevators, bus stops, spokes of uh, torus, and pedals of cycle. This is minor uh, power sources. Next slide, please. So waste and water management. We will be subcontracting our waste and water management to different subcontractors as shown. We have given cast loads. We have provided the waste and water routes in the community area. Next slide, please. Communications. Each person on board will have a PCD or a personal communication device enlisted in automations. For internal, we have two systems. Wired, which is optic fiber cables for high-speed data transfers and modified Li-Fi technology for networking on the go. For external, we will have laser technology and the required devices will include receiving and transmitting antennae. Two receiving antennae in the second uh, is, and the second and is for backup in case the first fails. The communication between Earth and Mars will be subcontracted to Dugaldine Astro Systems. Transportation. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll be having uh, personal bicycles, uh, which will have pedals with piezo systems. We'll be having buses with uh, 15 to 20 people uh, capability. And we'll be having uh, family autom automobiles, uh, which is a four to six person transport equipped with AI and automated driving. Our different volumes uh, will be connected via elevator. Next slide, please. Now I would like to pass on two observations. The external construction robot builds the settlement by holding onto the jigs with its retractable clamping system and prints the hull components layer by layer using different materials for, of construction. The internal construction robot can transform itself into various forms. The first is the standard mode, where it uses its extendable arm to do lift to lift materials. The second is the beast mode, where the ICR can attach a construction module to itself and perform, ta perform tasks such as welding and drilling. The third is the 3D mode, where the ICR attaches a 3D printing module to itself to print out and extrude house walls. Next slide, please. The external construction robot will be transported in three different casts with three different modules, which will then be assembled by the F1 M8 robots we subcontract to Grumbo Aerospace via litigation limiters. Materials extracted from the M-type asteroids are then loaded into the ECR, who build a jig network by welding. Thus, a construction starts in a modular manner. Uh, so next up, we have the facilities for uh, subcontractors. 
uh, we have listed the subcontractors that will provide us with uh, services and will require a considerable area on our settlement. The locations have been taken care of on the basis of whether they require pressurized or unpressurized areas. Next slide, please. Uh, here, we have shown the cross-section of the residential torus, where we have uh, underground levels. In the first level, we have the location of the following subcontractors. Clean up your act, waste products, and carbon creations. We have also allocated area for the different aspects of air and water. In the next level, we have space for robot storage, food and accommodities um, cars, and blown away, which provides emergency inflatable houses and furniture. Then we have the location allocation for Torset to me, uh, which is 1% uh, re residential area, which is shown in the community layout, 1% area in manufacturing, which you can see in the slide, and landfill next to agricultural area for multipurpose tourists, uh, or sorry, in the multipurpose tourists, which again you can see on the slide. The floor chart in the right on the top corner shows how the subcontractors will access the materials that are imported. Next slide, please. Now I would like to hand over to human factors. So I'll now be start, uh, starting with human factors and safety. The residential tourist is divided into three sections of equal area and each of them have a unique community layout. There is also a list of amenities that we will be providing for both residents and visitors. Yeah. Communities have various themed restaurants, casinos and clubs which reflect the distinctive characteristics of the three sections. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. These tables show the area per unit of each of the amenities and residential buildings, along with the number of them that will be occupied after each expansion. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Now we have the consumables list with both the edible and non-edible consumables. They have been estimated on the basis of existing averages. The edible consumables are specified in grams per person per day and the non-edibles ones in the quantity per month. Next slide, please. These are the house designs which will, which will be built at the IOC and keeping in mind the less than earth quantity, we have provided high ceilings of 15 feet for each floor. We have also shown detailed interior plans of the houses. Next slide, please. We now have the exterior and interior layouts of the houses which will be constructed after expansion. Next slide, please. Um, we were required to provide temporary lodging for scientists outside of hotels, so we have an additional interior layout for one of our apartment buildings which will accommodate them so that they feel right at home. We have also provided hotels for the mining crews and any other people that would visit our settlement. We have a common area in each hotel so that even if guests are staying alone, they never feel that way. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we show how we have the capability of isolating areas of the residential tourists for the use of airlocks, which will be subcontracted from lossless airlocks. In the case of a breach which destroys a certain section, the population of the sector will be divided equally amongst the remaining two sections. They will then be provided emergency housing to inflatable buildings and furniture, which will be subcontracted from blown away. These will be stored underground and retrieved if or when needed and set up on green spaces. Then, at the table in the bottom, we have listed our two types of spacesuits and where they will be stored. We have also included initial quantities and how we plan on increasing them with each successive expansion. Next slide, please. So, our spacesuits will be subcontracted from extreme survival technologies. Both spacesuits will have a requirement of a built-in VR display and emergency suits will be required to be lighter in weight. Further requirements include an extra layer of protection and EVA suits. We also need a layer of rapid puncture initiated healing via oxygen-mediated polymerization. Basically, if there is a breach in the spacesuit, then the oxygen rushing out will activate the polymer and it will immediately seal the breach. Now, let's move on to the specifics of our airlocks. The diagram on our right indicates the location of airlocks. These may look like they are present externally, but we assure you that they are present within the settlement. Next slide, please. Okay, so on this slide, we have displayed the donning and buffing uh, procedures and the airlocks. 
Uh, these have been demonstrated in the diagram, which you can find on the bottom left hand side. And basically, uh, in the first in, uh, first chamber, they put on the inner layers, which include the maximum absorbency garment and the, uh, the compression the suit. And then in the second and third, they put on the space suit and uh, the helmet, gloves, boots, and everything. And uh, upon re-entry, there is a cleaning system which is present in the third outermost chamber. Next slide, please. Okay, so on this slide, we have displayed the various recreational activities we have planned for our guests. We understand the importance of physical exertion for he of health for, for both physical for health, both physical and psychologically. These activities are specifically designed for minors who will stop at Astoria for rest and recreation. So for our rough hands-on games, we have bumper bubbles in which uh, the players will be in big absorb-like bubbles and will try to knock each other out of the arena. Then switching the switches, uh, the image for which is displayed on the right. We will also be organizing a fun twist on Capture the Flag, which will be played in VR headsets and low G. Space Wipeout will also be played in low G with a higher intense level of obstacles present. Lastly, we have a relaxed station center which will incorporate various techniques to keep our guests calm and relaxed next slide please Let me introduce everyone to the top tier automation system we provide here at Astoria. Having discussed the ECR and ICR already, let's move on to how our construction process will be monitored. To reduce any disturbance caused by the sun while transmitting signals, we will be setting up a detailed satellite network, whereas the internal construction will be monitored by the control center when Astoria is full, fully operable. Both the interior and exterior delivery systems will be subcontracted. Humans will be able to interact with the construction process from time, time to time. On completion of the uh, IOC, both the ECR and ICR will be repurposed. Next slide, please. Here on the left hand side, we can see the table for machinery required for business processes. On the right, we see various devices which we can use during emergencies. The retractable landing gear in our escape pod makes it capable of carrying out emergency landings on any terrain. The firebot is built as a drone and has thermal and infrared sensors to reach the spot affected immediately. Next slide, please. Astorians will have all their data protected by various methods like fingerprint recognition, retina scan, scan etc. The network diagram is highly subnet, which is protected by a firewall, and transfer of data is carried out via SDP. Next slide, please. As we mentioned earlier, some of the ECR and the ICR will be repurposed as repair and maintenance board. Even after our construction process is complete, the jigs will not be removed. The ECRs will still uh, be on the jigs. Uh, while still on the jigs, we'll be able to repair any damages as soon as possible. This will save a lot of time and fuel. We will store these robots in the repair warehouses. Next slide, please. If you're wondering what the interior of a control center looks like, then that's exactly what you see on the screen along with the displays of our control units. All our robots, casts, and ships for MRO can be viewed and tracked from here. Next slide, please. Our contingency plan and alert systems are highly reliable. We have designed a detailed plan, action plan for all possibilities as is listed in the table below. Next slide, please. Um, so we have used three main robots to enhance the livability of the user. The first one is a personal device for all the users in the settlement. It has a shape of like a drone. It can scan through the user's health and can also perform an ECG. In case if the user faces any illness, then a signal will be sent to the paramedic pod. This PCD also has a hologram projector so that the users can visualize. The second main bot which we will be using is a surveillance bot. This will be in the shape of a bird to give an effect of nature of the earth. The monitoring will be done with the help of camera and mics present in them. The third main robot is a paramedic pod. This is a pod which has many small robots inside it which will carry the patients to the pod. The automated surgical equipment present inside it can perform a surgery inside. To reduce the human labor, we will be using we will be subcontracting many bots from bots for you. Some community computers will also be present. Next slide, please. Um, there are five main servers which we will be using in the Astoria. The first one will be used for construction and later then it will be used for the maintenance. Second one will be used for external and internal communication. The third one will be used 
for most of the robots and the automated system present. Fourth one will be used for asphalt mining and the last one will be used as a backup server in case of any emergency. We will also be using boron arsenide crystals for cooling. Next slide, please. Um, we also have some automated systems to detect any type of threat approaching. We will be subcontracting navigational satellites to double line asteroid systems so which will look at any asteroid approaching to the satellite. We will be harvesting, destroying, or deflecting different type of asteroids about which you can have a look over here. Um, next slide, please. Um, these are the devices which we will be using for taking care of the asteroids. The first one is a grappling hook drone, which harvests, ma harvests materials from the M-type asteroid, <coughs> and it safely brings the asteroid to the mining site. The second shield drones reflect small asteroids with the help of a shield present in them. In case of a big asteroid, it will destroy it with the help of lasers present in it. There are also three different types of threat levels about which you can have a look over here. Um, next slide, please. Um, now I would like to hand over to the schedule and cost department. On to the schedule, we plan to achieve the initial operational capability within an estimated four and a half years from the February of 2081 to the October of 2085, to be precise, when Astoria will be open for 6,000 residents. As you can see, the schedule was made in accordance to the phases of construction and provisions have been made for research, execution and error correction for each task and they have been color coded respectively. Major milestones have been depicted through ribbons. Next slide, please. Moving to the expansion phases, Astoria will reach its full operational capability of being able to house 15,000 long-term residents and 3,000 short-term residents by the November of 2088. Oh, Astoria will be built with a vision and a mission to expand uh, human colonization into the outer solar system. Keeping this vision in mind, we have proposed a phase, uh, phase where we expand our production capacity and take on spacecraft construction to under our forte. These, uh, these will be eventually be the tools that achieve the vision of ours. Next slide, please. Here are the costs incurred under various heads all costs are measured in US dollars. Uh, the basis of our calculations were current cost averages. And we have taken into consideration the fact that we are in an asteroid belt, uh, but we did not take into consideration any economic inflation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here's the list of subcontractors that we, we have uh, the, used. The Foundation so Society may form separate contracts with them. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, in the phase-wise division of cost, you can see that the costs are higher initially. It's only because the first few phases require external construction and internal expansion, and the later phases mostly consist of only internal expansion. Uh, the total cost built to the Foundation Society is uh, 92.5 billion. Next slide, please. Large parking spaces have been provided in all three hybrid ports to accommodate transfer ships arriving at any hour of the day. All human operations will be functional 24-7 to cater to the needs of the miners. Workers will be working in day and night shifts to facilitate 24-7 functioning of the settlement. Provisions for excess agricultural production, storage facilities, and processing capabilities have been provisioned beyond the needs of the Astorian residents. The given table shows the specific commodities provided for the mining camps. These specific provisions will be warehoused at the hybrid port. Robotic arms will be used to load them into the ship at the terminals. For MRO features, please refer to point 2.1. Space tugs are stored in the hybrid port. The tugs have been provided with a towing mechanism on the underside. On detecting a disabled vessel, space tugs will be launched to the site and these tugs will carry the vessel back to the MRO area at the closest hybrid port for overhaul. Separate torai have been provided to avoid the meeting of the miners with the residents. Next slide, please. Fusion propellants will be produced at the manufacturing area of the multipurpose torus and sent to the docks as per their requirements. Replacement capabilities for the MRO have been catered to with the help of the manufacturing area. Provisions have been made to accommodate office workers coming from Cassandra to Astoria. 
the following are the materials which will be taken from the asteroid belt for spacecraft constructions at Aust at Astoria as explained in the proposed phase for expansion this is how the quarantine and isolation protocol will be carried out in case life forms are found in outer solar systems they will be isolated in the research base itself an airlock has been provided at the entrance of the lab researchers will be provided with space suits in the first chamber of the airlock cleansing and sanitization of the researchers will take place in the second chamber space suits will be attached to tethers from the back providing oxygen over an isolated ventilation system separate isolation zones have been provided for different types of life forms found vacuum chambers have been provided for anaerobic life forms for their containment also temporary life forms temporary inflatable houses will be, prov will be provided for the researchers convenience if they want to avoid rigorous tra traveling constantly next slide please The clean rooms in the research bases will be able to accommodate 100,000 people. They'll be having laminar airflow hoods. Ultra low particulate air filters will be provided at the entrance of the hood to filter the non-purified research base air. Exhaust fans with ULPA filters will be provided at the bottom of the two side walls to filter out the contaminated air in the clean rooms. The filtered pure air will be reused in the research base to avoid wastage. Automatic emergency exit brake barriers have been provided. If power failure occurs and automated doors fail to function, manual override is still possible. Two levers will need to be simultaneously pulled down to open the emergency exit. Human monitoring will be done in the control rooms as shown. The same emergency procedure will be followed in the control rooms as in the clean rooms. The following are the instruments which will be used in the satellite built at Astoria for the exploration of the outer solar system. Next slide, please. Thank you for your patient hearing, judges. Uh, we made the settlement by uh, trying to uh, trying to cater to all points in the request for proposal, and we hope that uh, we, as a company, has been able to satisfy your needs. We hope that you consider our our proposal uh, for the contract. With that, I invite questions. All right. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. First question. Let's go to. Um, uh, an overall view, page uh, page three. Oops, and I'm not there myself. Um, um, yeah, page three. So, um, so we have only actually show show. Um, try page seven. And and uh, the question is about the environmentally separate areas required by four point. There we go, 4.3. So you're showing the and, and total environmental isolation. Maybe we should have said isolation instead of separate. Uh, just with airlocks, um, we're looking also for provisions of uh, separate utilities, separate everything, separate air supply. Um, do, do you, where, where is the infrastructure for providing uh, power, uh, water supply, sewage handling. I, mean, I, I don't see any any utilities areas, and there would need to be a separate one for each of those um, those those separate uh, habitable areas. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> that question. Yes, ma'am. So the residential tourist is divided into three sections internally by airlocks, and that divisions means that. All three sections will have different air supply, different water management systems, which is anywhere to be subcontracted, and a different uh, waste management system and pipeline system. So I think um, there's I'm, separate environments. Uh, okay, I'm, I, I'll need a lot more proof. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Next question, please. Um, uh, for that, uh, ma'am, we, we have shown it in the operations map 3.4. Okay, I'm, I may have missed it. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you want that, uh, we can just show it once again. Okay. Well, if I can take one, I'd like to uh, like to go to slide ten and the construction sequence. Okay, so we got slides ten and eleven, <clears throat> kind of looking at how this construction and expansion goes. When does the rotation start? And what, what direction is rotation and when does it start? Say again. The rotation, the rotation starts at, uh, at the completion of phase three when the IOC is raised. It's written. 
Oh, I see it. Okay, the got it. And the, okay, uh, okay, got it. I see, and the I see the protection. Yeah, okay, thanks for pointing that out. Now, what's the mass of the completed part? What's not completed in the part that's not com complete at the time you start the rotation? Uh, two sections out of the three internal sections of the residential tour tour are not completed okay. internally, what, what are you, and half yeah, of the you, agricultural volume is not completed. Okay, what do you have to do to complete the internal structures for uh, those sections that have not yet been completed at IOC? We need to carry out internal construction processes for that. Okay, so it would seem that the mass would be less on the not complete side than on the completed side. And if you're rotating, it seems like that would create a balance problem. Did you consider that? Uh, so that could be countered to some extent by rotating the other torus uh, in the opposite direction. Okay, so the little torus, the other torus is the little one you're referring to that's kind of behind the big one in this view on uh, the right. Yes, sir. Okay, that looks like the mass of that would be much, much less than the mass of the big one. And so, so anyway, it looks like something you probably want to put a little bit more thought into. And then how you, how you control the angle, the axis of the settlement as you go around the orbit of, around the sun. Do you have any kind of anything to counteract torque or... Now, is there something indicating the direction of rotation on those two? So the direction of rotation is indicated by the direction of the thrusters nozzles on the surface okay. of the turai, the thrusters which we will use to initiate the rotation. Okay, so which direction does it rotate in? How do I see which way it rotates? Sir, if you close up the nozzle of the big torus, it points in the clockwise direction. So it okay. will rotate in the clockwise direction. Clockwise, okay. How about, is, is there something showing a direction of rotation of the other torus? Uh, sir, I think if you can go to slide two or slide three. Slide two or three, okay. Uh, so slide two would be better. Slide no, sorry, two, slide okay. three would be better. Okay, slide three, okay. I don't this see anything there. Also, we've got the little thruster there. Where's the little thruster? Can you get a pointer or something? I think it's that little turquoise thing um, uh, toward the oh, left. Yes, ma'am. Turquoise thing. Okay. Yeah. I can't so, see anything to show a direction on the small one. I, I can see it. I can see the point on the big one, but I don't see anything on the small one. And it's not clear that the small one would counteract the, the gyroscopic torques of the big one. So, okay. Just spin it up to 10G, David. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like some, some rockets that we know that spin rather rapidly during launch. Um, I got a question, and I can see the thruster. It looks like it's going in the same direction. But I, I like, uh, I've got a question on page four. Yeah, the other pit, yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, so your picture of a ball bearing there, that obviously isn't standard industry offering that we have today. Those are using machinery. That's not gonna be sufficient for the purpose that you have, but I understand that you're trying to show a representation. My question is how do you keep the pressurized and the non-pressurized parts of that bearing intact? So the only parts uh, where there will be an interface between the rotating and non-rotating areas will be where the spokes. Okay, that's good. You can stop right the there. Will be the you can, yeah, you can stop right there because it would have been nice to have seen that interface depicted. So thank you. Next question. So uh, if you can go to any image of the uh, the overall design. So you're, you're saying, there you go. Um, you're saying there will be one of the three interior areas will be completed at IOC. And then then it it'll, that looks like the outer mold line doesn't change, but you'll be completing interior areas on the other two. 
uh, completion of interior buildings is going to require a lot of moving a lot of equipment. Uh, how, how do you get construction materials and equipment into those other two areas um, to do completion? And, and then after you've done that, after completion, presuming there's big equipment, how do you get it out? <laughs> The major materials we will be using to build our interior buildings will be aluminium and that will be sourced from repurposed casks. So casks will be moving by the ports I mean, and the this equipment. Is, this is, it's a very much simpler question. Where are the, the doors that you move big stuff through to get it into the construction areas? I mean, literally, how do you, where, where, are the, the, where are the trucks that, move? I mean, if you're going to get a whole cask loaded with construction equipment and supplies into that torus, how do you get move whole casks in and out to complete construction inside? Uh, in the, in the residential- the cargo, uh, cargo ports? Where the, the residential the, if the cargo ports are on the axis, how do you get stuff out of the axis into where you're using them? <laughs> the I'm wondering if the maybe- residential port. Yeah. Is, I'm, I'm looking at slide 19. Is that is that where the casks are supposed to go? Through these elevators? And, and it may be that the, the question is too simple to be understood. <laughs> I'm, I'm a cargo guy, so I'm always thinking about moving stuff around. Anita, I think we are yeah, no, no. already into the 10 minutes of our question answers. So. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Doug Aldine. <laughs> Next presenters are Farinicht and Fluke Fortin. Just give us a few minutes and we will okay. uh, unmute all of them. I think we have a break now of 10 minutes. Um, I think we'll just take a five minute break. No one leaves. Um, just stretch yourselves and we'll start in exactly five minutes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Abhishek. Hey, Jack. Yeah, I didn't see an email with the uh, Barrington's presentation. Did I miss it? Um, I'll send it again. Give me a second. Hey, Jack, I just sent it again.
Gaurav, can you please put off Farad Nikton's uh, presentation, please? Yeah, just a second. Not sure what's going on here. Let me just try the PPT. Okay, uh, I'm ready for my side. Brian Nickton, you can begin whenever whenever you're ready. Brian Nickton, you can start. Yes, you can unmute yourselves now. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Fachnichten Flufachten, and today we will lead you onto a tour in the most considerately designed, carefully planned, and comprehensively presented space settlement, the Astoria. Next slide, please. Please turn to the next slide. Since the Astoria basically serves as a supply and transaction center for multiple space settlement, the docking port is certainly a crucial feature to provide maintenance, repair, overhaul services. This is placed at the left end with an antenna and three levels, and we will start our journey here. The lower level with the largest radius has eight protruding arms, and by increasing the length of the rails radially, it can hold large ships like Cassandra. Also, the rails have electromagnetic launch systems to launch satellites. The middle level is set to be the fuel depot and has four arms for passengers to get inside. The top level is the recharging and refueling station for unmined mining vehicles. The structure design following the port is six concentric tori. The other three are three separate residential areas as required by the RFP. Their size and rotation are identical to provide artificial gravity. The torus will be mainly lighted by natural sunlight. Meanwhile, to artificially induce sunlight, mirrors are placed near the windows, and they can be rotated to redirect the sunlight into the residential tori. They are cleaned and maintained by maintenance robots. Passengers can travel from one torus to another via passages that connect the tori to the central shaft. The tori are connected to each other as well. The smaller tori concentric with the residential tori are saved for subcontractors who are responsible for the construction of Astoria. Next slide, please. In case of an emergency, the residential tori are equipped with escape pods, as indicated in the top left picture. Also, each of these tori can operate independently despite the breakup of another. In the residential tori, the artificial gravity varies between 0.4 to 0.5 g due to the separation of floors. The pictures show the rotating and non-rotating areas, as well as the pressurization, all of which starts at the completion of IOC. The dimensions are labeled as shown. Moving on with our tour, following the sixth concentric tori are another four tori, which are for recreation, operation, automation, research and control, respectively. 
The central shaft is, is equipped with elevators that can transport passengers, cargoes, and vehicles throughout Astoria. Then, the four spheres are designed for raw ore storage, followed by the large storage cylinder, as the RFP requires sufficient and provisioning storage capacity for future business development. To meet future requirements to accommodate more people, the storage cylinder can even be replaced by another residential tourist. After the cylinder is the industrial zone, equipped with mining docks so that raw materials can be sent directly into refining factories. Uh, so could I just, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, so we weren't able to unmute like from the starting. Uh, the, I was, I'm the president of Ferenikton Fukfarten. Uh, a lot of my team aren't unmute, I weren't uh, able to unmute. And so we would also like to mention, sir, if you could use a keynote pre presentation, because this doesn't have the proper formatting, we had mentioned that to you earlier. I think this is the wrong file. If you could open exactly, it. sir. So a lot of issues. <laughs> uh, over to you. Anita, what would you like to do? Do we restart the presentation for them? Why would you why would you submit a PDF if you if you're presenting from Keynote? So we submitted Keynote, PDF, and PPT. We submitted all three. Yeah, so we can use PDF. There's some compatibility issues with the PDF. It uh, doesn't scale and render properly. I can pull it up again. So could you try the PPT? I think that'll be the best. Uh, this is the PPT. Can you try the PDF version? Yeah, the dot PPT I am using the dot. Uh, I am using the PPTX file. All right, we'll uh, go ahead and use your keynote file. Decide which one you want to use and we'll restart your presentation. Uh, keynotes, please. Yeah. Keynote. Okay. All right. All right, go right ahead I was and restart your time. Abhishek, you'll have to stream the keynote file, please. Also, so Stomil can't unmute. If you, Everyone can unmute themselves. So now I can say I wasn't able to even then. <laughs> So it was key, it kept showing the participants, uh, the host is not allowing participants to unmute themselves. <laughs> so please, if possible, just let the, keep the unmute of feature um, just off at all times in the presentation. So it's become, I'm just not able to unmute myself. So, actually, so also a bit more context. So we'd asked Gaurav sir before submitting if Keynote was fine and he'd- All right, we're going to start the presentation. Stop with the, we, we don't really need any more explanations. Uh, Agree, sir. Okay, so we'll start. Right. Go ahead. Okay, I will start from the beginning. Um, just I think, uh, yeah, I'll begin with the presentation. Uh, if it's fine, Catherine. Um, okay, we'll just begin right away. Uh, sorry for the delay, so. Thank you. That was a good solution. Uh, to have them restart with keynote. Uh, I was trying to unmute and it wouldn't let me to it, when you asked me to to pitch in there. Thank you, folks. Thank you, okay. sir, for allowing us to restart. Um, I'll just begin straight away. A dream. That's what Vera Nikton Fukfarten began with all these years ago. And that's what continues to propel our thirst for success even today. Without keeping everyone waiting, I present to you a dream of establishing Astoria as a powerhouse in the service sector of space. We'll begin with the structure we propose to establish, and we hope Astoria can provide a model example for the Foundation Society for further expansion in the belt. Um, handing it over to Catherine from our structures department. Thank you, Sumil. Now please turn to the next page. Since the Astoria basically serves as a supply and transaction center for multiple space segments, the docking port is certainly a crucial feature to provide maintenance, repair, overhaul services. This is placed at the left end with an antenna and three levels, and we will start our journey here. The lower level with the largest radius has eight protruding arms, and by increasing the length of the rails radially, it can hold large ships like Cassandra. Also, the rails have electromagnetic launch systems to launch satellites. The middle level is set to be the fuel depot and has four arms for passengers to get inside. The top level is the recharging and refueling station for unmined mining vehicles. 
The structure design following the board is six concentric tori. The other three are three separate residential areas as required by the RFP. Their size and rotation are identical to provide artificial gravity. The turrets will be mainly lighted by natural sunlight. Meanwhile, to artificially induce sunlight, mirrors are placed near the windows, and they can be rotated to redirect the sunlight into the residential tori. They are cleaned and maintained by maintenance robots. Passengers can travel from one turret to another via passages that connect the tori to the central shaft. The tori are connected to each other as well. The smaller tori concentric with the residential tori are saved for subcontractors who are responsible for the construction of Astoria. Moving to the next slide, please. In case of an emergency, the residential tori are equipped with escape pods, as indicated in the top left picture. Also, each of these tori can operate independently despite the breakup of another. In the residential tori, the artificial gravity varies between 0.4 to 0.5 g due to the separation of floors. The picture shows the rotating and non-rotating areas, as well as the pressurization, all of which starts at the completion of IOC. The dimensions are labeled as shown. Now, moving on with our core, following the six concentric tori are another four tori, which are for recreation, operation, automation, and control respectively. The central shaft is equipped with elevators that can transport passengers, cargoes, and vehicles throughout Astoria. Then, the four spheres are designed for raw ore storage, followed by the large storage cylinder, as the RFP requires sufficient and provisioning storage capacity for future business development. To meet future requirements to accommodate more people, the storage cylinder can even be replaced by another residential tourist. After the cylinder is the industrial zone equipped with mining docks so that the raw materials can be sent directly into refining factories. At the end of Astoria, we see the liquid fluoride serum fission plant supplying electricity for the entire settlement, as well as the radiator responsible for radiating excess heat generated by the settlement. Moving to the next slide, please. Yes, direction control system is dispersed throughout Astoria, as indicated in the picture, to adjust its trajectory slightly. And the entry and exit points are shown in the picture as well. Please move to the next slide. While you are enjoying the exploration within Astoria, we are putting safety concerns as the topmost priority. To provide the most reliable protection for the settlement, we've got carbon fiber to distribute force and hollow aluminum um, I'm sorry, it should be the next slide. Yes, and hollow aluminum spheres to absorb impact energy. Meanwhile, to provide the maximum flexibility, we use graphene and carbon steel to increase the yield point and tensile strength. Ferro-nickel constitutes most of the hull, while electrochromic windows allow passengers to enjoy the colorful view outside. The polycarbonate protects humans from everything silicon bucket structure Cannot. Please move to the next slide. Now, after the overview, let's just have a close examination at the interior down surfaces, which means floors. In the top left picture, different um, the yellow color will represent a uh, top. Uh, uh, sorry, it should be the bottom left picture. Uh, the different colors represent the three floors uh, of of the residential tori. Sorry, left top. Each floor has a special um, construction plan, which will later be elaborated on by the human factor department. Similarly, the orientation of down services in the other tori are indicated as shown. The agricultural automation and control tories have respectively 14, three and three floors, and their usage will later be introduced by the other departments as well. Please move to the next slide. The asteroid on which we will initiate the construction of Astoria should be a M-type asteroid, which contains approximately 66% iron for us to extract the construction material. It should possess a minimum diameter of 179 meters and a location 2.7 AU from the sun. The picture shows the relative po positions of Astoria, the asteroid, and the sun. Please move to the next slide. 
The sequence of construction is determined based on the immediate needs. Basically, as soon as we start mining, the framework, space for subcontractors, and energy supply reactor are built first. Then, units serving different purposes are constructed to meet the IOC requirements, including docks, depots, and different tori. Next slide, please. The construction of Astoria will be completed gradually to reach its full capacity, as the second and third residential tori are built. Recreational tourists, along with the labs and remaining industrial units, will be offering our visitors the most ideal living experience. Please uh, move it to the next slide. As you see, the cassettes used for transporting construction materials initially will be updated to serve new purposes as agricultural units, escape paths, and tubes for ore transport. Their function will be introduced respectively later. For Astoria provides maintenance, repair, overhaul services in the docking port, which was introduced at the beginning of our tour, we have the industrial zone supporting its role as a hub. The industrial zone are equipped with mining docks and placed close to the storage areas to yield the most convenient transportation of raw materials and products. The labs are located at the torus next to the raw ore storage zone. Both the MRO hub and labs are separated from the residential and public area to ensure the safety and best possible experience for our residents and visitors. Please move on to the next slide. Now, this shows the timeline by which Astoria will be completed. Beginning in 2081, 3D Logistics and Beam Builders Limited will provide either 3D printers or trusts and start working at the first step. Bucky breakthroughs will provide tough gloves for the windows by the time residential tori are built, which is step four, five, and seven. The whole settlement will be completed within eight years. And by 2088, Astoria will be ready to, to accommodate a total number of 18,000 people who will have the opportunity to explore our design. Now let's welcome um, people from the operation to, to continue our journey through the Astoria. Um, so the operations, next slide please. The operations department has been, uh, has been designed with efficiency in mind. The settlement will be built at approximately 2.698 astronomical units from the sun. This has been chosen because the density of asteroids in this region is ideal. It's not too much, causing a credible risk of collision, nor is it too less, ensuring that there's enough materials if we ever need to mine. The size of the asteroid is also going to be capped at around 900 meters to ensure that the uh, chance of finding regolith will be less, which will greatly uh, complicate construction. The tables below show the sources of construction materials and equipment, and um, uh, the asteroid that we land on will approximately be 180 to 190 meters wide. Next slide, please. So the atmospheric composition was shown, and it varies from residential to agricultural areas. The composition in the agricultural areas is chosen such that it's most conducive to plant growth, which means that there's higher ox carbon dioxide and wa water vapor quantities, and the pressure is maintained at 0 0.65 Earth sea level, and initial uh, air is given by stuff of life subcontracting, and it's maintained by the Clean Up Your Act. Uh, agriculture will be maintained at the in the operation stores over the 14 floors, as explained by the structural department. So there'll be no animal rearing, just synthetic meat, and initially, there'll be a total of 95 casks of uh, food coming to um, uh, Astoria right before the setting up of agriculture. And the graph bar chart shows the consumption of agriculture and the amount of resources it will need accordingly. Next slide, please. So the agriculture will be made very efficient by using vertical farms. These vertical farms will be placed inside repurposed casks like explained in structures. The uh, agriculture will happen in the operation stores over 14 floors, and they'll be illuminated with special wavelengths of light that are most conducive to that particular crop. This will mean that the output is maximized. After output, it doesn't mean it's ready to eat though, because there'll be agro bots that can uh, take the crop and put, uh, send it to the selecting bots, which are pictured in figure 3.2.4. In 3.2.4, after the selecting bots sort the food, they sent into specialized converters as pictured on the right side of 3.2.4 figure. And those convert the raw material into feedstock that can be then used to make edible food. Next slide, please. The power generation, so this is the main um, power grid. 
so the main source of power is the liquid fluoride thorium uh, fission reactor at the end of the settlement there are three main backups we know that each of the backups cannot handle the load of the settlement alone and therefore there's three that work in tandem together and can uh, take care of the entire settlement's power needs we also have lithium sulfur battery that store two months of energy and all of these are sent via high voltage direct current cables which come from zap industries to prevent the conductor skin effect and um next slide please so for water initially we'll be hiring stuff of life to give us the quantity and that'll be for the maintain and recycle by waste products and clean up your act we'll also be employing a few of our own processes as shown in the flow chart on the bottom left flocculation biosorption and vacuum evaporation to ensure that the recycling is maximized waste management will be uh, handled by tosser to me and bottom cleaners and non biodegradable waste will be handled by special systems that we import from belvistat and those special systems are pictured in the blue flow chart on the bottom right figure 2 3.2.8 next slide please for communications internally there's two possibilities since we want redundancies we do not want that if one communication method fails we are left isolated firstly there's wireless communications offering speeds of about 500 gbps and this is called wimax and then we also have optical fiber lines that can go up to 178 tbps in control centers and 60 tbps to residents or uh, externally we have antennas that can shoot laser beams and those laser beams transmit the data over long distances and we increase the efficiency of the laser beams using semiconductor optical amplifiers and uhf antennas which are uh, bought in by orbitlink communications next slide please i'm um, sure you want to continue So for transport, there are three or uh, four main types of transport. So first, there's the Vport, which is kind of like a last mile type of transport. It seats two people and it's very personal. And there's eight thousand two hundred of these, and they're available at request from smart bands, uh, smart wearables that people carry, which will be further elaborated on in operations. Then there's also smart buses, which carry fifteen, and they uh, drive on specific routes. Then there's medvulences, which ensure that people get from where they are to medical facilities as fast as possible. And the pressurized elevators carry people up and down the central shaft, and they have a capacity of two hundred passengers. Next slide, please. So uh, these are the utility routings uh, uh, and the routings of the buses. So the road network, as you can see, is very extensive. It extends most of the usable part of the settlement, and the smart bus network extends up and down the. Uh, Uh, residential terraces and the elevator you can see is uh, down the middle shaft and the um the di diagram 3.2.14 and 3.2.15 show the routings of utilities electric grid sewage roadways pathways and and these will further be discussed in human factors in the community plans next slide please so the main uh, we'll be using a variety of jigs to ensure that construction is most efficient as possible so first there's the laser cutter which ensures that material is to the dimension we need it the clasp which helps us hold materials easily the paint roller which provides an aesthetic feel the adhesive applier which lets us uh, um, bond objects better and the polisher which gives a clean finished look and all of these objects are very modular they can be fit onto bots created by the automation department and the internal and external communication robot or uh, construction robot next slide please and of uh, these are the material processing so initially we land on an asteroid and we mine that asteroid and rock donald will mine it for us via litigation limiters and these are moved to refineries and they refined and they 3d printed from there and some of the main standardized processes are shown in the middle uh, chart and um, so there's a lot of automated functions such as temperature regulation and uh, cost correction and a lot of human control functions such as control center surveillance and shop owners which will be further touched upon in automation next slide please so the subcontractors will be assigned spaces they need to ensure they can work so th this is just a brief of all the subcontractors that require spaces on the on astoria and uh uh next slide please and uh, this is a map showing where the respective subcontractors and their facilities will be located and tosa to me is particularly special since it requires three different types of specialized areas and those have been represented by circle a cross and a square like shown in the key next slide please 
We now move on to human factors. Um, at VFA believe that the customer's comfort and accessibility must naturally be catered to, which can be indicated through our community plan on this first slide. On the first floor, we have facilities mainly catering to minors and space crew members, which include hotels and a vast number of recreational activities. It is separated from the other floors to ensure that the minors can safely have fun and enjoy themselves at Astoria. The second floor is mainly for administrative purposes and includes the control center, foundation society, and educational center. On the third floor, we have accommodated vast areas for residential buildings, lodgings, as well as, uh, as, well, uh, as, well as lodgings, which are interspersed with recreational centers and necessary amenities like medical clinics and schools. The segments are divided by airlocks. Next, next slide, please. As human factors, the core theme around which comfort and functionality of our customer de customers depend, these are the amenities that we have incorporated. We have included large medical clinics that will facilitate state-of-the-art smart life support systems, as well as AI-based diagnostic screening. The benefits to reap from our green spaces and edible landscaping of our parks and public spaces are that they act as eye pleasers and psychological soothers. Visual learning is enhanced through AR-based curriculum at education centers. We have a vast variety of restaurants and indoor entertainment facilities, which are key aspects of human comfort and luxury. Our community hall serves multiple purposes, including harboring the assembly areas as well as our um, banquet halls. And finally, our sports and fitness complexes um, are paramount in ensuring that the major problems of muscle atrophy and lo lo loss of bone density are mitigated. Moreover, to cater to our human need to socialize, we also provide um, team sports as options as well. The tables on the right indicate our consumable item quantities, which include basic amenities um, like toiletries and medical aid. Next slide, please. The theme of our residential neighborhoods is change. Well, imagine the aura of the neighborhood changing tri-monthly, but simulating various unique yet famous cities and cultures. We aim to optimize this through cultural features, including art and entertainment, such as a walk through celebratory museums of famous artists, or even a holographic adventure through the Amazon rainforest. These provide the customers the ability to enjoy adventure, to, to enjoy several niche experiences of the earth by giving them the opportunity to choose their neighborhood or even switch to a neighborhood that they are eager to live in. Next slide, please. Um, this slide shows all five of our interior house plans. Each house design caters to the needs of a certain demographic while keeping in mind specific requirements, including gyms, theaters, and other facilities. Next slide, please. The internal drawings that were on the previous slide correspond to each of these external drawings. Um, for maximum community integration, we have kept the floor to a floor number to a maximum of four floors. Next slide, please. Safety is extremely important to us, and each tourist has a maximum carrying capacity of 9,000 people. Hence, as part of our safety system, we have two emergency plans. The first contingency plan is in case a floor of the tourist is damaged or breached, and it involves residents ev evacuating to the other two floors via evacuation tunnels. The isolation gates are shut immediately in order to ensure the breach does not impact safe zones. Um, emergency warnings will be issued by personal devices of passengers and speakers installed all over the Taurus. The second emergency plan, which will be executed when an entire Taurus is damaged, involves usage of escape pods to transport passengers to compensating Tauri. We have both EVA and IVA spacesuits that have specialized functions. They will be subcontracted by extreme survival technologies and are stored in airlocks. The donning and doffing involves smart wardrobe systems, which will be expanded upon in automations as well. Next slide, please. We at VF1, as human engineers, highly prioritize luxury and rejuvenation. That is why we have combined the fun of traditional activities uh, on Earth with the perks of being in space. Our first, first activity is 3D football in zero gravity. The users get to experience the fun of playing the internationally beloved sport of football in zero G. The entire enclosed field is cushioned and padded so that the users are safe and safety poles are subsequently located so that they can use these for maneuvering. Then we have the sport bird luminosity. It is a hybrid of this classic sport of laser tag with, combined with the fun of gliding in zero G. This sport lets the users truly experience zero gravity since they're equipped with mechanical wings which help them glide and they shoot lasers and tag each other with lasers. 
the next activity around the earth is for our more nostalgic and homesick users. This activity allows the users to communicate with residents on earth through realistic augmented reality. The users can also visit places which define our blue planet, such as the Amazon rainforest. Next slide, please. Over here, we can see some more recreational activities for our users. Firstly, we for our users. Firstly, we have the air nightclub, which lets our users socialize with each other while enjoying zero gravity. Then we have the rejuvenation lagoon, which which lets the users revive their senses by visiting the spa and receive custom treatments so that they can truly rejuvenate physically and mentally. Then we have the motor zip line, which offers a fun and adventurous tour of level three of our settlement through a zip line. Then we have the gaming zone, which lets the users immerse themselves in the classic uh, gaming uh, in both classic and modern games. AR and VR technologies will be used to enhance the sensory experience of our users. Next slide, please. Uh, so our docking system was designed keeping efficiency and safety, keeping the efficiency and safety of our users in mind. So our radially distributed docks allow the uh, I have two layers, the upper and the lower layer. The users enter the facilities via the upper layer and the cargo is transported via the lower layer. Two bridges connect the spacecraft and the docks. Four aluminum alloy mechanical arms firmly grip the spacecraft, or uh, firmly grip the edges of the spacecraft so that the users inside are safe. This process is monitored by the control room. The docking system is an emblem of safe arrival aboard the humble Estonia. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. All right. Um, with that, let's dive right into the construction process. Uh, our exterior construction bot has multifunctional arms with precision tools, allowing for construction and assembly. This robot combines LIDARs with cameras for sense perception of its surroundings. The cameras also help humans monitor the progress. Now for interior construction, we have dome bots, which are basically the size of insects. They can move through uh, small spaces and carry out the construction in a swarm-like formation. And now both of these bots get repurposed for maintenance and repair later. Uh, next slide, please. The construction process is divided into two stages, before and after achieving initial operating capacity. Once trusses are built, the ECR starts the exterior construction process and the term boards start the interior construction. After IOC, the finishing continues, but heavy construction is limited to areas without residence. Uh, Transtruck is the autonomous vehicle that we have designed for the delivery of materials and equipment. Uh, next slide, please. Now the control room has been divided into three sections. And there are 96 operators in total and eight operators working at once. Uh, four work in section A, two in section B, and two in section C. And they all work eight hour shifts. For security, there's a check to access first the control room, and then the personal device will be used to authorize access to the individual workspace. The next slide, please. Now, the control room gets contingency reports and enables operators to manually override automation systems. The display shows the uh, the display shows the docking system user interface uh, with the ship repair status on the right and the container details on the left. Right. Next, our alert and response system is highly automated. The threat alerts come on the screen as pop-ups on the side, as you can see. They display the live video surveillance of the affected area, the threat level, the immediate automated responses that have been initiated to fix the problem, and also a progress bar, which which the operator can use to monitor the situation. On the left, we have the atmospheric pressure, composition, the power storage, and data usage. Uh, in the display, we show the example of a fire hazard, and the red circle on the right corner shows you that it's a threat level three. Now, there are three cases where the operator will need to step in. The first is if it's a threat level three, which is the highest threat level. The operator gets live video surveillance of the area and options for further actions. The operator can then judge the situation and work accordingly. The second case if it is if it's a recurring issue, then statistics about the past occurrences is provided to the operator. This includes the past actions that were taken, the frequency of the issue, the areas it had affected in the past, and the duration for which it has persisted. All of this is to help the operator figure out the origin of the problem. The last case is if the progress bar pauses. This could be if the automated responses weren't enough to deal with the situation. The situation is escalating and therefore would require further action from the operator. Next slide, please. Now, in regards to automation systems for safety, we have uh, first the multi-purpose drones, which help de-escalate hazardous situations and also monitor the settlement. We have medic bots, which are the first responders in all medical emergencies. 
And we also have comcoms, which we will describe later in 5.3. Next slide, please. Right, now when uh, residents come to Astoria, they get to decide on a personal accessory, which have their personal device fitted into them. These devices work as IDs and also help monitor the well-being of the residents. The personal device monitors the health and can be used to send medical alerts to the nearest medical box. If the person is unable to send the alert himself, if for example, he's unconscious, the personal device will be able to detect that and send an alert autonomously. Now ComCom is our manifestation of an ideal personal robot that responds to voice commands. They work out all the household chores and the menial tasks. Next slide, please. Here we have described the different computer specifications for the different sectors of the settlement. Um, next slide, please. The network map. It aims to maximize the efficiency and ensure data protection. Subnetting has been used to prevent unnecessary data flow through the system. We use data dumping to improve search speed. We also use an RBAC system to prevent breach of privacy. We also have really good redundant systems to improve security. Virtual redundancy is provided by putting a backup server for all important servers. Now, these backup servers are further backed up by a private uh, by a private cloud located on a satellite which is orbiting around the around the settlement physical redundancy is also provided by locating the uh, by securely placing these servers at different places of the settlement when you may continue right uh, next slide please here you can see where the control rooms are situated uh, next slide Right. Now, coming to our defense against asteroids, uh, we have two mechanisms using lasers and thrust power drones. For asteroids with non-neutralizable material, lasers would be used to explode asteroids or alter their course, and the drones would be used to push away the fragments. For asteroids with utilizable material, layers, uh, lasers would be used to explode them, and drones can then collect these fragments. Uh, the asteroid harvesting satellites are deployed uh, when detected asteroids open up harvesting opportunities. Uh, next slide. Right. Now, asteroids will be observed by an astronomical radar and their course will be plotted. The collision risk would be calculated and each potential collision would be ranked based on this risk and the urgencies so as to prioritize the astro uh, asteroids on which uh, actions are to be taken. As we mentioned, we have two mechanisms to deal with asteroids. We will use artificial neural networks to create a simulation to analyze the effect of the laser usage and evaluate the success rate and warn the operator of any unwanted effect from the scattering of the asteroid fragments. With smaller asteroids, this process would be completely automated and not require much operator attention. There will be an alert pop-up for a specific time, time interval, and if the operator chooses to not act on it, the automated action will go through. But for alerts with low success rate and warnings of dangerous effects, the operator will be prompted to judge the situation and respond accordingly. Uh, thank you. Next slide. Moving on to the business development department. The settlement will be a commercial and social hub since there will be 24 seven activity because of the ships arriving from nearby mining operations with commodities and passengers. There will be a provision for miners to enjoy recreational activities and food and beverages in an area far from residents to prevent any uh, unruly behavior from affecting the residents. The transportation of the tools and consumables to the mining ships will be done by elevators and are stored in a dedicated warehouse close to the docking bay for optimum time efficiency. Enough agricultural production is provided to fulfill 19,500 residents' need. A warehouse stocks exist for miners and emergency situations with at least 4,500 residents worth of food production. Since at any time, the maximum number of residents would be 15,000, there will always be this much food available. Automation providing bots for repair work and mechanical services to spacecraft that dock at Astoria can result in increased efficiency. The food production and storage will allow ships of all kinds to refuel given the numerous types of propellant available aboard Astoria. Facilities for manufacturing replacement and repair parts in the industries will allow for an expensive MRO to be conducted, which provides financial gain as well as uh, time efficiency to spacecraft of operators. Tourist operators will be allowed to work out of Astoria providing guided outer space tours to visitors and residents after the completion of the docking bay and residency. The mining from the nearby asteroids results in large amounts of construction materials being available for export, as well as local improvements of Astoria after uh, full capacity has been established. 
The asteroid field is full of uh, great energy potential as well as metal resources. Uh, and ma mining industries can be used to refine the ores into useful materials to make spaceships. The resources are almost endless, so the potential of developing space industry is huge. Scientists can do their research on extraterrestrial drive samples if found in an isolated location from the rest of the population located near the control rooms, as well as examine asteroids and nearby moons, planets, and other uh, celestial bodies for water and other resources may be brought, brought back from exploration missions, and the class 100,000 rooms will provide a highly sterile environment for any experimentation. Space tug services are integral for rescue operations for disabled spacecraft and will be carried out on the once the settlement is at full capacity and able to construct spacecraft. In terms of further expansion and future plans, once full residency is achieved, there will be a focus on faster transport to nearby settlements, fully, automation, uh, fully automating the mining process, and transport of stored materials to nearby planetary settlements to allow for increased re residency by converting the torus into the storage torus into a residential space. Next slide, please. All right, so now on with the cost and schedule. Regarding how Astoria will be built, just as we are awarded our contract, we will start our research and development, which will kick off to more phases and hence eventually lead to the starting of construction in late 2081. The IOC will be achieved by year 2088 and the 5,000 population will be established. Eventually, full residency will be achieved by 2089. You can see this through the Gantt chart and the legend for the same is on the right. VF has ca uh, carefully calculated the costs and made sure that uh, that when it came uh, to estimating the cost uh, and made sure to take in multiple factors when it came to estimating the costs. After including various factors such as uh, the weight of transporting materials, how many casks it will take to ship the materials, building Astoria to what VF dreams would take approximately 109 billion US dollars. Please the change to the next slide. Oh, yes, please. Oh, next slide, please. Building Astoria to what VF dreams would take approximately 109 billion US dollars. The tables for the cost of operations, employment, construction, structural costs, as well as the initial cost of food to be supplied to the humans who work there before, agricultural, uh, before agriculture begins can be seen on the PPT. Next slide, please. And this is the compliance matrix for your reference. Thank you. And that's the end of our presentation. We will now be taking questions, please. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. All right. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I, I have one, uh, one, one big question. Uh, so if you you'd show very early in your presentation configuration, I, I at least I didn't see a clear representation of the configuration at, at IOC. I'm, I'm very clear about the overall configuration, but what does the configuration look like at IOC? Yes, can you please turn to the um, construction sequence uh, keynote? I think um, the picture of each step is provided beside the text. Can you get it on the screen? I'm, uh, which page would it be? And my iPad is not scrolling very well. Yeah, give me a second. I'm trying to get, get it on there. Thank you. Sir, it would be page nine and 10. If so, you could go and get uh, Okay, I'm getting there. I'm on 23, come on. iPad is slow. <laughs> nine, 10. All right, page nine is up. Page nine. Yeah, so the um so the Astoria will reach us uh, IOC uh in after step four is completed. So the picture is shown there. Okay, that for for me to understand it needed to say IOC very clearly on it. All right, so it's it's right. it looks uh, like I one, one IOC is given over there. Looks like one residential Taurus and part of the industrial area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, no one else is asking one. Uh, let's okay. go to, oh, go ahead, David. 
Okay. Uh, on, uh, I think you had escape pods somewhere shown. I'd like to see where is where are they referred to? What's the process for using them? Um, the escape pod, I think, is also uh, um, in the structures part. On slide three. Yeah, let's see. Well, first off, how were they used? Was there an emergency section that talked about their use? Yes, in case of an emergency, um, people will get in the escape pods and the escape pods will be um, will be sent uh, just to to be separated from the from the residential tory. So they are placed on the side of the residential tory. That would be okay. like twenty nine in the top uh, in the top left picture. Yeah, I see them in the picture. I just trying to figure out after they've escaped, where do they go? Uh, there was a there was another slide that showed that that they go from the compromised area to another Taurus that is not compromised. That's right. Okay. And and how do they land and dock on a rotating surface on the outer rim? Is that that is a rotating surface, isn't it? Uh, yes, the the Tory are rotating. Yeah. So how do they? I mean, that's a pretty complex trajectory to try to dock on something that's rotating on the outer surface of a rotating surface. Is if we figured out how you're going to do that? Uh, the, pot, the pot can move. Say again. Um. So um, um uh, so I believe in the in the Cossack in the Cossack page, the pod is has a uh, more detailed picture, and it shows that it has a propeller um at the uh, at the end of the escape pod, so it can um uh, it can so it's the engine can propel it to move, and there are the control rooms. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really answer the question of how you get it to coordinate synchronizing with a rotating. Uh, surface. Um, so we okay. have station blocks at the uh, uh, far end of the settlement, and that is where the escape pods will be going to, in case they cannot okay. form a trajectory to a rotating torus. Okay, I'm sorry. Where does where is that location? So there are docks at the uh, left end of the settlement and on the right end. So okay. So it just would be good if you could show that, that process for how to use the escape pods. Okay. Um, I got one. Can you go to page nine, please? I think it's nine. Yeah, okay. So this clearly shows that your construction sequence starts with your settlement being attached to the asteroid. When does it detach? Because it looks like the settlement is, you know, detached from the asteroid at completion. Uh, we have assumed that this whole asteroid will be consumed um, so there will be no need to de detach the asteroid from the asteroid. Yeah. Uh, okay. The asteroid we probably can... should have said that somewhere. Uh, yeah, I actually, I actually got a related question to that. I saw there was a landfill. Is that like recreating a new asteroid or something? Uh, where's the landfill, please? Uh, let's see. Where does what page do we see the landfill on? Uh, let's see. I think that, that might have been on page 24, 24, have, something like that. Yeah. Might have been a requirement for one of the subcontractors. I forget. Yeah, which it was one. yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was on I think it was on yeah. a subcontractor requirement on page 24. Mm -hmm. uh, right hand lower quadrant. Uh, uh, the brown circle representing a landfill. I'm I'm just wondering, are you are you what are you what are you doing with the landfill? It's a requirement of the Tositomy subcontractor, the actually requirement landfill. So we provided them with a landfill. That, that's my okay. fault, David. I should have addressed oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. This, if we're okay with that. I'm on slide 44, something that caught, I guess, a few of our interest was uh, you put. Uh, shatter with lasers. I was just wondering how that was going to happen. Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to get a better idea how you're going to so shatter. Unmute sawmill, please. Of course, the meter. Sir, I'm sorry, I didn't realize we had to keep unmuted across the whole presentation. Um, but I think our HOD of automation is also muted and he was messaging me across the presentation that if there were any questions about automation to just ask if you guys could unmute him, please. 
Um, yeah, if possible, it's Adit. Uh, I'm unmuted now. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Adit. So, uh, basically, uh, the the person uh, who who was uh, make uh, making the the laser, who was gonna sh shatter the uh, the uh, who, see uh, our pr our primary uh, thing is that uh, that we're gonna deflect the course of the asteroid. Uh, uh, at the first stage but if that does not work if the asteroid is too big then we're gonna use the laser to shatter it and there's actually a research uh, there's actually a research page which we looked into uh, before uh, before giving that uh, so uh, probably if uh, somebody can uh, cite that research page uh, otherwise i guess it should be given i i have a question on page 28 Uh, so that the type five, I see, I can clearly, clearly see a kitchen there. Uh, where are kitchens on the other types of houses? Am I just not seeing them or do we go kitchenless? In the type four, it's just beside the dining room. On type four, it's beside, oh, I think I see it. Okay. Looks like um, it's just not labeled. It's it's, no yeah, it's our fault. We forgot to label that. In type three is well, it's inside the dining room. Okay, so it's just not la not labeled. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Actually, in Sorry. all the types, it's beside the dining room. Our fault completely. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Thank I got you. another. I got an. I got another one on on um, waste handling and and water and subcontractors. Going to page twenty, I was looking at. Sewage and water lines. Let's where's page twenty. Yeah, I mean the, the utility routing shows those running together, and I, I think it might not be the best idea to route your water and your sewage lines together. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean you know you. You got spinning, you got a spinning uh, tori. You know you've got some gravity. You know wastewater. You want to have it go down, uh, starting from fresh water that's more in the up. So you know, maybe uh, you could, is that just missing detail as to how those are routed? We certainly don't want them mixed. Blue is sewage slash water. Um. So if I may answer to that. They are actually separate pipes, but because of the size constraints of the diagram, we haven't been able to show it very clearly. So that's a mistake on our part, but they are separate pipes. Okay, maybe a, maybe a better uh, routing diagram that shows the actual flow of fresh water through uh, facilities and, and, and into turning into wastewater and then how that gets to the subcontractors. Uh, where are the subcontractors related to the, you know, where's, how do they get the water in and out of the subcontractor facilities? So, so if you um, go to page 24, you can see the location of the subcontractors. And there are facility routings in that Taurus as well, where most of the uh, subcontractors are located. So they are connected to the utility route. Yeah. So, so which one's handling the wastewater? So um, I think cleanup your act is handling the wastewater. That has access to the sewage pipes and the water pipes because cleanup yard okay. processes uh, recycled okay. some of the sewage. Are they what? Are they in the IG level or what? What part of the spinning section are they in? Um, I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? Yeah. Do, do your, does your wastewater end up at the farthest out part of the radii? Which is where yeah, the wastewater. Is water. Where the, where the wastewater is going to want to go. So please could you unmute on Rick, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are out of the question. I, I think we are out of time okay. now. Out of time. Okay. All right. We need to get a, get on with the next presentation. Uh, okay, Gaurav, thank you. Gaurav, you're up if you can put on the next presentation. Thank you so much for I nicked and flew Parton. Good presentation. Laser mechanism. Thank you. Will, will it be possible for we'll take just... two minutes to unmute Vulture Aviation and then we will be ready to go. Whoever needs to be unmuted, please raise your hand. So 
I have a clear view and I can unmute you. And guys, please do not unmute uh, yourselves throughout the presentation. Again, giving more time for the people who want to, who have to unmute themselves. Please raise your hands. Okay, um, I think we are good to go. Over to Vulture Aviation. All right, so um, I'll begin whenever everybody else is ready. We're ready. Okay, then my time will start now. So ever since we first landed on the moon, human, humans had taken their steps further and further into the void. To continue on the pursuit to the stars, we will continue the idea of exploring with inclusive strength of all humankind. As president of Vulture Aviation, I proudly present Astoria, a settlement dedicated as the home of diverse explorers of mankind and Tauruses, as long as the transportation, service, and maintenance hub for commerce in the asteroid belt. To walk you through our vision of this hub, we will begin in the order from structure, operations, human factor, automation, cost and schedule, and last but not least, business development. Without further ado, Let's get started into bringing the universe into your doorstep. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll now be beginning with one of our most uh, important parts of this proposal, the structural design. Could we please uh, move on to the next slide? Yes, thank you. The total dimensions of the entire structure are 2,400 feet by 4,960 feet. Astoria has two residential tourists, Alpha and Beta, of different radii to provide views of space and plentiful natural sunlight, and a total of three isolatable volumes, so as to ensure evacuation in times of an emergency is smooth, and so that risk is minimized while, fostering, while at the same time fostering a sense of community. The residential volumes are kept separate from the industrial volumes as a safety measure, and three dogs are dispersed across the central shaft. Could we move on to the next slide, please? Of all the volumes, mainly the central shaft and the connection spokes would be non-pressurized, and one of the industrial volumes would be non-rotating. Moving on, entry and exits would be carried out as follows. Could you move on to the next slide, please? As all the docks would have a security check and will have airlocks, Dock Hestia, located mm -hmm. at the top of the structure, would handle non-cargo shipments and has the capacity to be later expanded to accommodate Cassandra's scale ships as well. Dock Aries in the middle would be the hub for receiving and sending out ores and refined materials along with the maintenance and repair of ships that may need any such service. The last and smallest dock located right beside the laboratories is there to assist research and future expansion. In the next slide, residential tourists have two levels, thus minimizing edges and maximizing the use of space. The surface level houses residential, commercial, recreation and green areas while the subsurface soil level housing has agriculture, storage, subcontractor space, waste, power, air buffer stock to make each volume almost near self-sufficient. Of the two industrial volumes, um, next slide please. Of the two industrial volumes, Taurus Vecta would be rotated to 0.45 G, whilst Juno will have a microgravity environment. These house labs, storage, refining, processing, assay areas, subcontractors, and will also have plentiful space, space for future, future expansion. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Construction of the settlement begins in January 2084 with the construction shack landing on the asteroid. And in this phase zero, subcontractors, holy moly, custom cargo accommodations, large print, and hard roll will begin providing services. Phase one would oversee the construction of the central shaft, communication, and power so that the control center may now be shifted from Arizam to the settlement itself, which reduces pain. The settlement would not be placed on the surface of the asteroid, but however, mm -hmm. jigs will be attached from the settlement 
to the asteroid. Phase two um, on the next slide. Could you could we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, phase two oversees refining capabilities being added to the settlement with the industrial volume Juno. And phase three brings in cap facilities for people moving in with recreation and residential areas. Thus, our initial operation capacity is reached by November 2087. If we could move on to the next slide, please. We have phase four and phase five, which uh, in which full residential cap capability and all the laboratories are gradually established with phase six, the final Vulcan dock, which is the one for laboratories and future expansion is added and we achieve full operation capability by November of 2090. Now, if you could move on to the next slide, we have a basic idea for the bots that um, are used for construction, which is Extron, Incon, a 3D printing bot. And in the figure, we have shown uh, the bots working on the jig. Um, the settlement will also be detached from the asteroid uh, after initial operable capacity is achieved. Um, moving on, we have materials. For the hull materials, Bucky Breakthrough white fabric is used. Could we move to the next slide, please? Right, thank you. Um, for hull materials, Bucky Breakthrough white fabric is used to shield from smaller debris that is less than two inches while we have lightweight carbon fiber, magnesium alloy, all sourced from the asteroid belt that are used to enhance structural integrity. For windows, we would be using Bucky Breakthrough subcontracted window material, along with a layer of fused silica. These windows would turn dark by the nighttime. Now we'll move on to operations um, and continue um, the presentation. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. It uh, seems like Marco has uh, is muted right now. So could you unmute him? Ask him to raise his hand. Marco, could you raise your hand? Continue with the presentation, please. Okay. So I'm I'm very sorry for that. So now we're on to operation. Uh, first, uh, here is a spreadsheet of the materials we will collect. We will mainly be collecting raw materials such as silicon and iron from all three types of asteroids and then working with subcontractors such as hard roll to refine and synthesize them into more versatile materials such as ferro-nickel and stainless steel. Carbon can be collected, collected from C-type asteroids and can be synthesized into carbon fiber, which can protect from small to medium-sized space debris. The use of ele electrochromic gas can, uh, glass can also be able to help with simulating day and night, which will likely make things more feel more authentic for the passengers. Magnesium and sulfur can be found on the Martian surface, and they can be used to create magnesium, sil silicon carbide, and sulfur concrete, both of which will be exceptionally use effective in the construction and maintenance of the base's hull. And to clarify, sulfur concrete may be weaker than normal concrete, but that is only under the influence of Earth's gravity. With the negligible gravity of outer space and the, ne and the abundance of sulfur on Mars nearby, we chose to include, to include sulfur concrete as a construction material. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, we plan to build the base 3 AU away from the sun on the outer edge of the asteroid belt and on an S-type asteroid, the diameter of which is 1.3 kilometers. Just to be clear, the entire asteroid will be consumed up in asteroid in Astoria's constru construction, so the base won't be resting on the asteroid. We chose this location for four reasons. One, S-type asteroids contain silicon and, and magnesium, which can be fused to create the base's whole structure. There are relatively fewer asteroids near the outskirts, so we are safer there. The asteroid's smaller size means that means that means minimal and dust regolith on it, which can interfere with construction. And four, we're in the proximity of larger asteroids and thus more mining camps. This location also lets us access the outer solar system, which is an expressed goal of the base. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so now we can move on to community infrastructure. Our in-base atmosphere will be sustained by air supplied by subcontractor Stuff of Life, which will help maintain oxygen levels incredibly similar to Earth's for maximum comfort. Atmospheric pressure will be kept at 65% of Earth's and humidifiers and radiators will, will maintain regular humidity levels and temperature, making life in the base much more comfortable. Foodstuffs will be hand handled by subcontractor Garden a go go. Our passengers can enjoy a steady supply of chickens, eggs, uh, vegetables, and more. After harvesting, these are processed and then stored in casks until needed. 
At IOC, an agricultural cycle of 12 weeks will produce over 14 million kilograms of food, which will be able to feed all of our passengers. 40% extra food will be produced alongside this, and buffer stock and provisional selling stock will have half of that 40% each. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. I don't. Okay. Uh, electricity and power will mainly be handled using 115 solar panel. Wait, sorry, sorry. Can you go back to the previous slide? The one, the one about power. Yes. Electricity and power will mainly be handled using 115 solar power satellites, which is supplied by Dugladine and Astro Systems VA litigation limiters. Our secondary fuel source are hydrogen fuel cells. Which will be the fuel for which will be collected from C type and NA ion batteries. Excess power will be stored in ultra capacitors, and electricity will be will power the base via wires from Zap Industries. Water will initially be shipped by Stuff of Life and will be subsequently recycled continuously by Clean Up Your Act. Products will assist with uh, pro, uh, pro, waste products will assist with Clean Up Your Act to recycle human waste. We will be using vacuum toilets and water sense faucets to minimize water consumption, and we will have one storage tank of 60 cubic meters as backup in case something goes wrong. Next slide, please. Uh, for solid waste management, we have devised a complex sewage system. Uh, which will separate the three types of solid waste, residential, agricultural, and industrial with, with clean up your act in charge of industrial chemical waste, waste products in charge of residential organic waste, and toss it to me in charge of inorganic waste. Bots for you will, uh, bots for you will help oversee the system and help separ separate the different types of waste. Household waste treatment plants will be situated in every residential segment for efficiency and for remaining environmentally separate as further elaborated on in human factors. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, uh, external communications will be handled by four antennas supplied by Orbitlink Communications, and there will be a system of seven satellites spread out evenly in their orbit, orbiting the sun at 2 AU for easier and constant communication with Earth. Internal communications will be handled by Li-Fi or data transferred via light technology and will be carried out via a server farm to avoid overloading. Deba uh, devices dubbed smart fabs will be used by individuals for communication and will have various applications for service and communication installed. Internal, okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, internal transportation is primarily done through the Astra system, which is a system of rails for the residential tori, uh, so, sort of like a for sort of like a trans system. Individual trains will include twelve to, to, to will, will include twelve sixteen seater pods to accommodate for many passengers at once. For individuals, the Helio cycle, a motorized bicycle, will be available in multiple sizes. For transportation in between tori and separate locations, the cask the cask bader or elevator using repurposed casks will help passengers reach distant parts of the base. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, finally, here is a diagram of the facilities and, and services for subcontractors. Their facilities will be spread out across the two tori. We decided to dedicate the majority of space to subcontractors who help with the construction due to the fact that we need to construct the base from zero and then maintain it, along with the fact that mining ships will undergo MRO. The subcontractors with the second most space are subcontractors that assist with things like transportation and agriculture to sustain the human population. And the rest of the space is given to subcontractors with comparatively low priority jobs, such as one involved in waste recycling. With Airtype Super Adobe walls covered in insulating fabric, subcontractors can change temperatures, atmospheric composition, and humidity to suit their own needs. And that's it for operations, so let's move on to human factors. Thank you. Thank you. Now time for the most interesting department, human factors and safety. If you can move on to the next slide, please. Right. As you can see from figure 4.1 on the top right, we have six neighborhoods across the two residential tori, which means there are two neighborhoods per each volume. Additionally, there are five neighborhoods that are meant solely for permanent residents that have the community layout that you can see on the screen as of now. Each neighborhood will be home to 3,000 residents. The layout, as you can see, is extremely focused on a community feeling with a variety of amenities and facilities, etc., right in the center. The pink boxes that you can see on the top and bottom are a lot allocated to unique retail options for each neighborhood, which we shall cover later. If you can move on to the next slide, please. The sixth neighborhood is solely for 
The sixth neighborhood is solely for temporary residents to ensure any ruckus caused does not affect the permanent residents and both can thoroughly enjoy their time aboard the settlement. There are two types of accommodation for the temporary, resi uh, 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 temporary residents, hotels and apartments. The pink squares host recreational activities and you can see they are spread throughout the layout with a big, with a big plaza in the center. If you can move on to the next slide, please. We have two types of houses. Number one are one bedroom houses that can house up to two adults. There are three in total with figure 4.3 identifying the first house in the IOC. If you can move on to the next slide, please. The second type of houses are two bedroom houses that can host up to four residents. The 1600 square feet house will be used as IOC. As you can see on the rightmost diagram, there's a vertical clearance of 110 square feet from the top of the building to the top of the Torah. And figure 4.10 highlight the two exterior house designs for the two bedroom houses. Buildings will be provided by large print and windows by Bucky Breakthroughs. Moving on, this slide shows the list of consumables and furniture. All furniture is subcontracted to remotely local products and toilet paper to bottom cleaners. Drone and delivery will be used to deliver, deliver consumer goods to passengers, to the houses of each passengers. Moving on, we have one spacesuit that is to, that is to be used in unpressurized areas with a total quantity of 19,950. The same suits, the same spacesuit will also be used for EVA. In the case of an emergency, since safety is such an integral part of human factors, we have designs in place to fit the entire population in two volumes. How? In two ways. Number one, each building has, a, has five stories. However, only four of them are used on a daily basis. And the last one is left for other population to fill in case of emergencies. Additionally, Blown Away will provide the inflatable buildings for about 1,500 people on the large green spaces in case of emergencies. Moving on, we have, um, if you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. We have two types of airlocks, as, as you can see from figure 4.12. The first one is, in the is only in the larger residential tourists between the two environmentally separate uh, volumes. These will be subcontracted from lossless airlocks. The second type of airlocks is between the down surface and shaft. There are six on each tori with 12 in total. And these, these airlocks are a combination of donning and doffing and an airlock, as you can see on figure 4.14. 4 the In figure 4.14, 4 the residential area would be on the left and the shaft would be on the right to give some perspective. In terms of storing spacesuits, 15,000 spacesuits will be stored with the residents in their own houses and 250 will be stored as extra in case of any emergency and, or extra usage in each donning and doffing airlock. If you can move on to the next slide. As I said before, we have five distinctly, diff distinctly differently themed neighborhoods, or as we are calling here, barrios. These images highlight the unique retail options for each of the neighborhoods. We have excess nightclubs, open, open concerts, ethnic restaurants, um, river walks, et cetera, that distinguish the themes of each of the neighborhoods. Each of the neighborhoods will also have slightly different environmental uh, conditions, such as Barrio 2 will have color therapy and soothing sounds, while Barrio 5 will have slightly longer nights to go with the theme. If you can move on to the next, uh, sorry. Um, as you can see, if you can go, sorry, can you go back to the last slide? Yeah, as you can see in figure 4.14, the docking port is identified on the top uh, above the smaller residential tori. And you can also see the microgravity recreational center right below the uh, larger re uh, residential tori, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide. We also have glass on both sides of the down surface for views of outer space. If you can move on to the next slide, please. Right, now to the most exciting part of human factors, recreational activities. We have, two, we have divided recreational activities into two. Number one will be solely in microgravity. We will have sports complexes with activity and facilities for activities such as capture the flag, uh, which is um, a traditional game which will be very fun to play in zero G, especially mm -hmm. since it's highly on, it's highly a contact sport. Then we have a twist and old favorite with uh, hoverboard Quidditch. Additionally, we also have Mag Throw, which is 
uh, a challenge uh, a game in which you can challenge your friends to throw magnetically charged magnetically charged balls counter rotating through lastly you have freestyle football which you can see in figure 4.8 uh, which is my personal favorite because players can play football in one on one in a small field and do stunts since it's zero zero Additionally, we also have mindfulness activities, which would be a unique experience since they would be doing meditation and experiencing different types of experiences, not only on surface but in the in the air. If you can move on to the next slide, please. And lastly, we have recreational activities that will be on the residential tour. Um, we have holographic open theaters, Dreamweaver. Um, Dreamweaver is. Um, a full body gear enabled activity that allows passengers to construct the world of their imagination in the virtual world additionally we also have uh, other activities such as rugby or american football inside a sphere um, as you can see in figure 4.21 uh, it it has a sphere in which there's another structure in the middle that enables people to get uh, energy and play uh, play rugby or american football around the entire sphere we also have other contact sports such as basketball uh, football etc uh, uh, and we also since uh, of course we want to focus on contact sports and other physical activities to help the temporary residents and minors release pent up energy but we also want to focus on medicational facilities because we believe that mental health is equally important for minors who were cooped up in small cooped up for long periods of time these will enable them to elevate stress and relax we have these through therapists as well as virtual reality libraries in the mindfulness centers thank you i would like to turn the mic to daksh pat to talk about automation next slide please moving on to automations three robots would be used to construct the majority of the settlement extron intron and the delbot Extron would be attached to the modular ring through electromagnets and would be responsible for the construction of the exterior of the settlement. Extron would feature two mechanical arms which would aid in construction. We want to Intron which would be equipped by which would be equipped with RCS thrusters would construct the interior of the settlement. Extron and Intron will serve as external and internal maintenance and repair robots respectively after construction. Finally, Delbot which is essentially a cask with a protective case attached to a modular ring that would be used for delivery outside the settlement circuit boards for automation will be will be provided by electroprotect next slide please moving on to one of the most innovative and essential designs of our proposal the modular ring the string like the string like structure will have thrusters to help maneuver it in microgravity and through its aid docking of automations is made easier it is designed in such a way that multiple units can be attached and detached with the use of electromagnets the modular ring will be composed of a strong nickel alloy it is the means of providing mobility to robots outside the settlement next slide please automations for construction prior to the arrival of humans the mining robot the mining robots will start excavating using equipment sub subcontracted by holy moly followed by 3d printing of materials which would then lead to the construction of the central shaft after the initial operational capacity is met or ico I ioc is met resident residential along with industrial volumes will begin will begin construction this would be followed by the setup of transportation tubes and the construction of of the vulcan dock before reaching ioc the construction of the settlement will be monitored by humans on irsim and the ioc and after the ioc the construction will be monitored by the control room um the next slide please levels of authorization authentication and hierarchy the settlement would have five <coughs> five data access levels namely interaction with hospitality robots reprogramming hospitality robots manually overriding robots of a sub department manually overriding all robots of a department and ma manually overriding all systems on your right is the hierarchy pyramid with the highest being the captain and the lowest being the passengers slide 5 please uh, the next slide please 
Um, speaking of security and safety, the following slide shows the threat levels and how they'd be addressed. The threat levels are divided into three main levels, critical, intermediate, and, and non-urgent. During the critical alert, automated announcements along with the evacuation of residents to their residencies would take place. Surveillance bots would lead this evacuation to ensure the safety of citizens. During the intermediate alert, alert similar, but measures of lower intensities would take place. The next slide, please. The control rooms. Uh, sorry for the typo here. There's only one control room. So Astoria will have only one control room, which would be divided into two halves, the automation part of the control room and the operations part of the control room. Through the control room, the settlement would be monitored. The movement, of, movement and inventory of the cask would be supervised, supervised. The control room would also monitor the status of ships docked in the MRO. Next slide, please. These are the control panels, as you can see. Over to the next slide. Two, or, two human communication assets have been designed by us, the smart fabric and the smart glasses, as you can see on the screen. The smart fabric would be a device that would track the health levels of its users. It would provide communication all over the settlement and can be used to call, uh, to call medibots in emergencies. Alerts and announcements would be delivered through the smart fabric. It would also be subject to frequent updates. Uh, it would also be subject to frequent updates with changes in its OS. The smart glasses would provide still image, video, and audio recording along with hands-free access to information. These glasses would enable the user to use augmented reality and real-time communication throughout the settlement. Over to the next slide. Automated systems for reducing labor. 100 police drones would be used in our settlement. They would be used to monitor and assist the people during emergencies. They would have a camera that would, that would, that would be able to zoom 100 times into the surface and would be equipped with IR sensors to detect fires. Similarly, 200 cleaning robots would be, would be there in our settlement, which would be used to clean public places. The bots would have two arms, which would have a vacuum cleaner attached. Over to the next slide. Next slide. Okay. The following is the networking for our settlement. All connections will be encrypted with homorphic encryption for secure data transmission. Different access there would be different access levels in the network. Li-Fi connections with various servers would have extra protection protective measures to ensure safety and privacy. We will be using optical laser communication technology for communication between Earth and Astoria. Satellite locations can be referred from 3.2.6. Primary and secondary cache will have higher storages to make sure highly, highly visited websites load faster for a better experience. Next slide, please. Now moving on to the external defense. Astoria will exhibit a strong defense mechanism which will function in the following way. 20 small drones equipped with low powered iron thrusters will orbit the settlement. At any given point, five of these drones will be orb orbiting the settlement. If the block or, well, the asteroid in question is smaller than 25 feet, the astrobot will capture it. If the size exceeds, tags will be sent to match the orbit and the speed of the block to that of our settlement so that the block will not move with respect to us. The block will then be broken into smaller pieces and brought into the settlement. If the block is not, if the block is not useful, tags will change its direction. Next slide, please. Over to the other department. Now coming to business part. Uh, now coming to the business part of the proposal, the configurations have been made to accommodate majorly three business pursuits, namely MRO and RNR services for visiting ships, industrial hub for asteroid mining areas, and research hub of the region. For the first business pursuit, the following services will be available 24 hours a day to all visiting ships to Astoria, the city that never sleeps. A provisional selling stock of food items to feed approximately 1,800, which is expandable up to 3,600 people will be produced in the Vecta tourists apart from the agricultural areas already present in the uh, in the lower areas of the residential tourists. Uh, tourists. Uh, could you please move to the next slide? Uh, the following are the other provisioning requests, which will be uh, which we expect from mining camps. Uh, these, um, all of these along with the provisional selling stock 
who will be warehoused in the second layer of the Juno cylinder, uh, by uh, uh, and they will be and they'll be loaded by and they'll be loaded by casks on modular rings. Uh, Helix docks will be used to hold ships for extended MRO and disabled vehicles will be held held via tugboats explained already in 5.4. To ensure that potentially rowdy RNR visitors do not annoy residents, uh, do not annoy annoy residents. All temporary residence has been provided in the half in half of the residential Alpha Taurus. A big part of our recreation activities will not happen. Uh, will not happen in the residential volumes. Instead, will happen in a different recreational volumes. Uh, and a few other mentioned precautions have been taken. You can look at them at the slide. Could you please move to the next slide? Uh, just a second. I would like to add something on the uh, previous slide. So basically, there's one typo right here. There is no recreational helix. It's a cylinder. Um, yeah, we're really sorry for that. Yeah, Could next slide. Please move to the next slide. Now coming. Uh, now coming to the second aspect, the second, the second business area. The fuel, the fuel depot will be present in the industrial area of Juno and stored in the second level of the same volume, which is warehousing. It will be made by electrolyzing uh, water obtained from uh, wa water obtained from asteroids. Spare parts will be provided by 3D Logistics, which have been given an area in the industrial part of Juno. You can refer to the map given in 3.4 for the entire down surface map of uh, Juno volume. Future Cassandra class ships will dock at uh, will dock at the Hestia dock. To accommodate for such high future needs, two additional floors can be added in the future as per the plan shown on slide 6, figure 2.16. At the same time, 50% of the area of the research and industry quarter of the Vecta Taurus has been left to the future, uh, has been left to the future needs of the Foundation Society. Which brings us to the third business pursuit. Apart from gravity-based industry, needs that may come up, uh, uh, needs that may come up, this place can uh, this place can be converted into clean rooms, satellite construction area, spacecraft construction areas, or any other lab the Foundation Society may need in future. The current laboratory layout has been shown in Figure two point fifteen in the structure section. The following will be uh, the fall could you yeah the following will be kept in mind while making the uh, while making quarantine labs. You can see that in the slide. Uh, over to scheduling. Right. Uh, next slide, please. Now, coming on to the schedule. This schedule has been carefully made, keeping in mind the spread out nature of construction according to the RFP, accelerated nature of construction in projects like these, yet trying to complete the settlement in the sensible amount of time. We have provided almost four years of research and development, keeping in mind the vast and dynamic nature of the asteroid belt. Achievement of IOC, FOC, and other milestones have been clearly shown. We have made sure to color code the uh, schedule according to the major processes that is planned to happen in any given amount of time. Extra time has been provided as buffer for most, if not all, processes. IOC will be achieved at the end of September 2087, and FOC will be achieved at the end of uh, November 2090. Next slide. Now, for the costing. Cost of materials have been provided according to the different volumes and materials. The materials cost take here uh, is the raw material used to get the as uh, these processes uh, processing of these will be done by hard roll. Accounts do not include the cost of buildings as well as they have been subcontracted to large print. Cash clothes of different consumables have also been provided. Next slide. A list of subcontractors with their purposes and the requirements that they have met has been provided right here. Um, next slide. So uh, this, um, the cost of automation, the salary of the employees have been provided and the final cost comes out to be 126 billion, 52 million, 160,529 US dollars. Now I would like to call back Kevin to take us home. Okay. So that brings our, that brings a conclusion to our design. So as as in Latin, at Astra means to the stars. And with our company's design, we can achieve it for sure. As a home for the diverse community in the outer solar system, Astro, Astoria is designed by Vulture Aviation, will certainly suit the, the various needs from residents and travels there. It will be the perfect foundation for the humans to reach out. And that will conclude our design.
Thank you for listening. Right. We'll be moving on to questions now, judges. Over to the judges. Okay. Is Anita unmuted? Yeah, I finally. <laughs> my, my little uh, symbol helps. Okay, um, thank you. Um, let's see, I think it was on page 35. Uh, it was said there are only two control rooms. Um, would you remind me where those are located? Right. Uh, so there was a typo there. Uh, we mentioned that uh, there was only one control room that has been split into two parts. And it would be located into in a volume. Um, is it possible for us to go to the second slide? Yeah, I want to see on the, yeah, on the overall depiction, I, I'd like to see where it is. Yeah. And also right. when we're looking, when we're looking at over well okay go ahead and then I'll have another question on the overall uh, depiction. Yeah. So as you can see here, uh, the control centers are located under the antennas. Control center and communication systems have been located under the antennas in a volume that is ring shaped right here. Okay, got it. Um, so since you're on this, there there need to be three uh, in, environmentally separate areas. I do see the two tori. Um, What's the third separate uh, separate area, environmental area? Yeah, so uh, basically the larger torus that is uh, built, uh, that is uh, for the residents has been divided into two parts uh, via internal walls and airlocks. Uh, it has been elucidated on in HF as well. And uh, basically that divide that is the way we divide here, uh, divide this volume into three, two different and hence coming up to three. Okay, it would be good get a better depiction of um, of how that division surely, happened. Surely, that's sure. a mistake on our part. Yeah, let's see. While we're on the same figure, which way is the sun coming in, and where are the where are the solar right. power satellites? Uh, so. Um, it's a little difficult to understand here, but basically, as you can see, the sun is marked right up here. So the face that, uh, so um, the face uh, which ha has the Hestia docks will always constantly be facing the sun and would be rotating like that, while these this face right here will be constantly facing the sun. Okay, so you're actually, your introductory slide has the lighting correct for the location of the sun. So the everything, everything below the biggest diameter is in the shade, correct? So uh, we do not have any um, residential volumes below the biggest tori. Just, just, just getting oriented here, trying to make sure I understand. Okay, yes. so where are the yes. solar power satellites? Right, uh, Pranav, would you like to answer that? Uh, yeah, so the solar power satellites will be uh, first in an orbit that is smaller than three astronomical units. Uh, we would have, uh, we have placed them in um, location of 2.1 astronomical units so that it's closer to the settlement but uh, also it's out of the uh, primary like it's, it's out of the asteroid belt uh, range it's, it's, it's out of the uh, inner asteroid belt so there are a uh, few collisions but in okay, terms so of the exact uh, location right, right. So, so, so they're uh, so they're all so they're all so they're all directly in line between the sun and the rectenna on the top or yeah no, they are in a circular orbit oh uh, yeah but yeah, basically okay, well, they, I mean, well, the has yeah, point to so, the Yeah, true. Satellites. So it's also been mentioned in slide five as well, just to point out. Okay. Um, well, and, I, and I'm curious to the backup rectenna, is that pointing? Are there satellites down there? And, and how did you, I don't know, how, how many did you say there were? There was like a whole bunch of them. I'm not sure how you got that many. Yeah. Um, there are more number of solar power satellites because uh, obviously the farther you go away from the sun, um, the larger area you would need. And uh, assuming designs do not change much, uh, okay, you would have to provide okay. more. Satellites. Okay, so so how many how many gigawatts did you consider a solar power satellite to be? Um, could you go to slide 15, please? Right, Prana? Uh, yeah, we considered uh, one solar power satellite to be, uh, to generate about 10 megawatts of, uh, 10, uh, sorry, 
uh, yeah, 10 megawatts of power, but uh, we have included so many because since the uh, solar power satellites would be closer to the sun, they would also be traveling faster and that uh, some solar, like a lot of them might not even uh, have direct access to the red tenant. Okay. So we need to ensure well, that. Okay, well, it, it looks to me like there's a problem with the overall arrangement of solar power satellites and number and rectiny. Go ahead. Uh, next question, somebody. Yeah, I've got one. It's got to figure out which one I want. Okay, page 25. Okay, so spacesuits and contingencies. Um, oxygen intake will last for 48 hours. Well, that's good. That's a, that's a pretty good performance. I'm just curious how you're going to do that. Um, spacesuits today are good for eight hours maximum. That's the amount of air that the suits can accommodate. So how are you going to get 48 hours worth of oxygen into a suit? Rinal, would you like to answer that? Um, well, that's going to be an awful big tank. Right. Or a very high pressure tank, one or two. Hold your breath, Jack. <laughs> um, but, it's so, a whole spaceship. <laughs> so could you please unmute um, Ronald? Uh, we will definitely work on this um, more as well. I'm sorry, I, okay. I, the person who worked on spacesuits I, has some problems getting unmuted. But, all right, well, we, we can move on. It just seems like a very ambitious performance parameter for spacesuits. We, we surely look without, without an umbilical of some sort. I mean, it, that would have been nice to see how you actually would implement that. Because like I said, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting and valuable feature. It's just, you haven't shown the viability. So let's go on. I have a question on page 10. Now, oops. Um, Uh, I, I don't see this there, but when, um, when page 10 was being briefed, it was mentioned that at completion, the settlement would be detached from the asteroid, the, the target asteroid from which the original construction materials would be harvested. Um, after detaching from something that is in the same orbit, how do you keep it from recontacting? Actually, we said that we'll be consuming the entire asteroid. Okay, so, well, that's not what I heard. Okay, and, and it would have been good to put it on the briefing chart so it was really clear. <laughs> definitely, yeah, that's a mistake on our part. We'll definitely be working towards that. See. I've got one more on page 40. Not that page 40, four zero. All right, so you got this um, seek and destroy bot that you're gonna use to go get asteroids, which is good. And you're, you're using ion thrusters, electric engines. Um, and those are very, very efficient, but they don't give you a lot of thrust. So how are you gonna accommodate the fact that electric engines don't move you very fast. Uh, we're sorry about this one. This had to be changed. Uh, we just forgot to edit the slides. Okay. Oh. If I can do one real quick. Okay, next, go ahead, Dave. You yeah. have another question? Yeah, if I can do one real quick. Uh, let's see, we have uh, a number of interesting sporting activities. Uh, let's see, those uh, Those were around what? Uh, uh, show your, your football and, and uh, Bowling and golf, or is that? That's uh, page 29. That should be really, really entertaining to have uh, all these uh, sports like that with uh, Coriolis Force on a rotating uh, settlement. It should be uh, pretty humorous to watch. It might keep the medics busy. <laughs> Uh, page 34 if we still have time yes we have about another two minutes 
Gora, by the way, you have been doing a fantastic job on the timing and alerting us to the timing. Thank you very much. Just want to make sure you know that that is incredibly much appreciated. So thank you. Um, so I'm looking at, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, looking at the iPad and the, and the laptop. Uh, this fire's extinguishing sand from the asteroids. How, where is the sand kept and, and how is it moved around to a fire and how is it prevented from getting into machinery and making a mess of everything in the settlement? So the sand will be kept in the subsurface areas. Uh, however, for the other points, I think um, we'll have to elaborate on that better next time. We'll work on it. Yeah, thank you. That's a good idea. Halon would be nice. <laughs> uh, one really quick one. Did I hear right that there's only going to be one control center? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, what's the contingency upon something happening there? I mean, we're talking, I'm thinking about everything you're controlling from there. And if something happens all of a sudden, where's the redundancy to kind of pick up and take care of any issues that takes place all of a sudden? Just really trying to wrap my head around that, considering some of the critical things that uh, are coming. I got one, Actually, one more. We have time. Uh, page 37. And uh, if we look at the uh, smart fabric, which I think is a, a wonderful idea, I noticed the little icons there. So we're still using Google, Gmail, and Google Docs in 2091. Really, like Boeing with this with the other company. This, this is great. Google was going to take over the in, in, the solar system. So I just wanted to ask: Are we really going to be using those applications and? 80 years from now. You can say uh, yes. Sir, I think they're meant to be placeholder icons. Yeah. Placeholder <laughs> icons. Uh, I don't uh, think Google will ever be a placeholder, but uh, all right, anyway, go ahead. Uh, Garv, if we have any more time, somebody else uh, can have Yeah, that's about it. We are right on time. OK, um, thank you, Walter Aviation. The last company presenting is Rob Donald. So, uh, Rob Donald, it would be great if you guys can uh, raise your hands. Thank you. Let me just unmute everyone. So I actually had a question. If we want to speak, will we have to keep ourselves unmuted throughout or do we have the right to mute and unmute now? Yes, could you please keep yourself unmuted throughout the presentation? That'd be great. Or so could you please open our presentation on PowerPoint because this uh, graphic in the front, it's actually an animation. Uh, okay, doing that right now. Thank you. Everyone who needs, needs to speak, are they unmuted? Could you please check again? Unmuted, Rhea Bansal. She doesn't have a raise hand feature, so she wasn't able to. Who's that again? Rhea Bansal. I'm still waiting on you guys to un unmute. I think uh, Nime Rastogi is also not unmuted yet. Nime, please unmute yourself. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no. 
Uh, Mayank Agarwal also needs to be unmuted. Okay, um, I think that's about it. You guys can, uh, oh, could you, you guys please, are ready to begin. Could you please check once you saw the presentation because it's showing a white screen with the logo. Yeah, I think the next screen has your animation. Okay. Um, so start? Yeah, please go ahead. Drop down, your time starts now. Someone once said, the only, the only place where success comes before work is a dictionary. In view of the same spirit, we, Dr. Donner, present to you Astoria, a, spa a settlement designed hermeticulously, keeping co-constructs co of efficiency, a creativity, as well as comfort um, in mind to, 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 um, to strengthen foundations of society's command in the asteroid belt. Over to structural engineering. Thank you, Soham. To our judges, welcome to Astoria, and more specifically, welcome to Doc Donald's vision of this magnificent settlement. So now if you would move on to the next slide. As you can see at FOC, we have a compact, as to our vision of Astoria has a compact structure integrating all the necessary components that your request or proposal has asked for and those that we have inferred from it. All the dimensions have also been laid out as well as the individual components shown in the 3D form for your perusal. Now of these three, of these individual components, if you would move to the next slide, Of these individual components, I would like to bring your attention to the 2D mockup of the shield system. This is something we hold unique to our system, the impact shield system, uh, which this utilizes adaptive torque gearing, which allows us to absorb the impact from asteroids from the front or the back of the segment with minimal damage. However, it is to note that they are not our main defense as automation will explain later in the presentation. Now, if you will bring your attention to the top left of the presentation of the slide, you will see we have mentioned viewing mirrors slash periscopes. This is not periscopes, that is an error we regret. However, we do have viewing mirrors, which allow, which allow um, the residents to view, at, view the sun. This is necessary as a settlement is on a perpendicular to the radius of a circular orbit around the sun. So that, that's one thing, that's one way how we're managing to give sunlight. Additionally, we also have rotatable mirrored panels, which reflect light towards the settlement, allowing those who do not have their viewing mirrors set up towards the sun to have natural sunlight as well. Next, if you shift, look towards the right side of the slide, you can see that we create artificial gravity through rotation facilitated by ion, ion thrusters, which maintain maximum thrust with high exhaust velocities. Our two residential tori and several, the, several other tori rotate, rotate using this, and our two residential tori rotate in opposite directions to negate any torque created. However, we are most proud of our low, low RPMs, which are fixed for any one structural component as they reduce the Coriolis effect and therefore allow for minimized adaption times for any miners when they come onto the settlement and when they leave. And this is maintained across the structures have, with each structure having a fixed RPM, one which, range, which, can, which is ranged between 0 0.8 to 0 0.92. Our variable gravity tori have, have one fixed RPM, but due to the fact that they have retractable armatures, we can have several different variable gravities on a single tori from 0.4G to 0.1G for a host of purposes, lab, laboratory, acad academics, recreational. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, thank you, Mike. So regarding the construction materials, there are four basic hull components and each of these will incorporate four basic types of materials. The characteristics have been provided to you in the legend in the bottom left and they have been color coded in the diagrams to show their uses as well. Move on to the left side, please. Now for your target asteroid sizes for construction of the settlement, <clears throat> we have chosen M type asteroids of three kilometers or more in diameter. Out of 32 million asteroids in the belt, over 1 million are possible candidates, which allow our customers to choose a wide range of orbits for construction as they so choose. We will not be building on, on an asteroid and in free space, as there are several other complexities involved in building on an asteroid. Now, talking about moving on about our construction steps, our first step, we build the base of our settlement, which is essentially the protection and the core. 
what that means is that our central axle and our impact shields are created along with our fission center in the first step in order to allow electricity for the entire uh, torus and a refinery, a refinery torus for which in which rotation will be initiated and we can begin processing the materials that we are beginning to collect from the, from the metal M-type asteroid. In the second step, we construct the armatures and the residential and agricultural torus. The agricultural and industrial torus are one, the one structure. And so now we can ship all major industrial processes from the refinery to the industrial torus where they belong. Now in the third step, we finally build the first residential torus and the, and the two out of three variable gravity tori, uh, tori as well as completing the internal, uh, internal construction of the agricultural torus, agricultural segment of that torus. This provides self-sufficiency for the settlement. Rotation will be initiated in its internal structures inside the uh, residential torus will be created. And so Astoria is officially a go. Now moving on to step four, progressing on to progressing towards uh, FOC on the next slide. So, so we have the second fission center is set up and initiated in order uh, not to, uh, to allow us to generate enough electricity to continue on to the settlement. Uh, we will regret the error that armatures built for the second residential torus will not be built in this step. Now, and the second variable gravity torus will be built and rotation initiated. In step five, we will build the armatures for the second residential torus and the variable gravity torus internal structures. In step six, all structures are completed. And in step seven, new residents populate the settlement and Astoria is at its full functioning capacity. Keep in mind, step four through step six are at a much slower pace compared to step one through three, as they require a greater level of safety due to the residents within the settlement. We will also be having a one month time period to assess the previous step to ensure all procedural inefficiencies are found as well as testing during the construction itself. Moving on. Hey, can, I ask, can I ask for a pause for a moment? Uh, Xavier, one of our judges is getting really, really bad echo and I'm not, but he is. Is anybody else getting echo? Um, not really. Oh, not really. No, no. we're not. I think we should come oh, okay. to the They're not, okay. Um, Let's see, Gorov, can you look to let Xavier log out and back in? Sure. Just, uh, just you can leave and join back again. Yeah, okay. Xavier, go ahead and log out. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so moving on to the next slide, we have we have a Gantt chart, which, as you can see in your copies in more detail, which specifies how much time we're going to take in creating our settlement and the different phases. Moving on to the next slide. So regarding 2.2, first of all, we have 120 meters of vertical clearance allocated to the residential tourists. This has been chosen keeping in mind a few factors. Number one, we didn't want to make the residents feel like they were cooped up in a hole. And secondly, we wanted to provide them long lines of sight to make it as close to a natural living space as possible. Regarding the vertical clearance of 50 meters given to engineering areas, we have provided that because there, are, there is no specific need of long lines of sight because residents are not gonna be present in this region. Moving towards down surfaces, on your left, you can see a legend that is color coded and shows the uses for the down surfaces in our settlement. Now the down surface itself is gonna be divided into two major regions, the in residential tori and the industrial and manufacturing tori. So for the residential tori, the bottom maps show the area allocations and they will have different usages of area at IOC and FOC. A certain amount of area will be undeveloped at IOC that is shown in black. As for the manufacturing regions, they will have the same area usages at both FOC and IOC. And a large area has been provided for refining due to the immense amount of refining it which, which will actually take place in the settlement. Moving on to the next slide. As you can see, all ports, all ports on, uh, we have three categories of docking stations which have been color coded and described. We provide a large number of docks to ensure that miners can sleep in their vehicles as has been mentioned in the RFP and in the program booklet. Now, if you would bring your attention to the bottom right render, you can see that we have four docking stations as you can see in the render and all of them have the potential for expansion in the future to accommodate more docks and therefore more vehicles. Um, and they are directly connected to a warehouse to ensure storage is as quick and efficient as possible. Moving on to the next slide.
So regarding the refinement and manufacturing systems, we at Astoria take pride in these because we have provided two basically refinery tori due to the immense amount of refining that will take place so that the external surroundings the which are filled with asteroids can be taken advantage of in the fullest regarding the laboratories there are going to be three basic types of labs one the first two being similar as they will examine the composition of the minerals in asteroids present and the third type is going to be related to biochemical research in which our external surroundings are going to be explored for extraterrestrial activity and the fourth is going to be the general type these laboratories will be based in variable g tori and their functionalities have already been mentioned before moving on to the next slide please so regarding subcontractors the subcontractors have been divided in three main phases pre construction before ioc and post ioc so the pre construction subcontractors provide facilities that are necessary for construction to actually take place and those which are based in the before ioc period actually provide facilities that are needed for a settlement to perform in its fullest and uh, the those uh, subcontractors which are based in post ioc they provide facilities that are essential to the settlement in the long term and we don't need it in the in initial stages of our settlement that's all for structure moving on to operations next slide please, next slide, please. A storia will be positioned in the three is to one resonance Kirkwood gap at a distance of two point five AU. Now we're using Kirkwood gas because of the low asteroid concentration and lower risk of damage. But despite this low concentration, we still have all types of asteroids available in small, although in smaller numbers. Now being in the middle of the belt, this also puts us at a close proximity to the mining towns. Additionally, the settlement will be built at a higher plane than the asteroid belt to enable communication as well as solar power generation. The graph on, uh, on the bottom left shows you the difference in concentration, and the table on the right shows the sources of all the materials. Next slide, please. Next slide. Maintaining appropriate atmospheric conditions in the settlement is the keystone for human survival and sustainability. For this, initially, water and air in liquefied form would be subcontracted to stuff of life. Food and other commodities of daily use would be transported from Earth. The gas requirements are, are mentioned in the table. Now, pneumatic pressure regulators will maintain a constant output pressure. Hybrid ultrasonic humidifiers will combine both vaporization and atomization units and maintain hygiene along with regulation of humidity. And liquid drop radiators will utilize the waste heat for monitoring temperature. The three systems coupled together will maintain the atmospheric conditions of the settlement. 5% air will be stored as backup volume. However, in as usual scenario, revitalization will be subcontracted to clean up your act. Air composition and partial pressures are calculated based on scientific reports outlining necessary physiological conditions for breathing at various pressures. Next slide. We will subcontract Garden Agogo aeroponics and hydroponics modules for furnishing the food requirements of the settlement. Two crew members will be required uh, uh, to check for pests and harvest for each day's meal. They will be assisted by inspection drones supplied by drones and deliveries to detect the crop growth and quality based on a database prepared by statisticians on Earth. And this accounts for a farm inspection. Food production will be done in the agricultural torai where growing conditions will be maintained as mentioned. AgriBot will be an automated bot with sites and pickers, uh, which will assist in harvesting. Storage of surplus food production will be achieved through hermetic bag te bagging technology, uh, which are easy, uh, trans easily transported as well. And uh, extra food items for uh, mining operations and emergency usage will be packaged using uh, methods like vacuum packaging, rehydratable food packaging, and items like aluminum cans and retortable thermostabilized pouches. And now the monthly food consumption and cask loads for most common food items is also provided in the table. Next slide, please. The power needs of Astoria will be met using solar power satellites and nuclear fission reactors. The solar power satellites will utilize special lenses to concentrate sunlight and then transmit them back to the settlement. Uh, subcontracted by Dougaldine and Fletcher while litigation limiters. Now for the fusion reactor, we'll have four nuclear fusion reactors outputting uh, 60 megawatts per reactor, loosely based on the design of NASA's kilo power. Uh, the power will be, all of the energy will be stored in SMES, superconducting magnetic energy storage devices, 
uh, which use room con room temperature conductors to re reduce operation costs. The diagram below shows the functioning of the same. Fifty percent, fifteen percent energy will always be stored as a backup reserve. And the tables on the right show you our power consumption as well as the power output. Next slide, please. Astoria has all the facilities to take care of your water requirements. Water will be subcontracted from stuff of life. Recycling will be done by clean up your act and sewage handling will be done by waste products. In order to ensure redundancy, the Sabatier process has been used as a backup source and this will only be used when our main system fails. Water will be stored in pre-chlorinated tanks which have Teflon bladders that will be used for, plump, for pumping the water out. As you can see, you have a table where we've given the water consumption per day. Next slide, please. Astoria has a unique waste management system. It allows for automated classification of waste using several sensors and cameras. The waste has been divided into four main categories, namely human waste, recyclable waste, biodegradable waste, and industrial waste, which all have their own processes for management. Industrial waste has its own specific process, which helps manage all the hazardous waste that is produced in Astoria. Next slide, please. When you're so far away from home, having a proper communication system is absolutely necessary. For this, we have both primary and secondary methods of communication. For internal communication, we're using light fidelity as well as radio wave based mesh systems for communication. LiFi uses light rays to communicate and this allows extremely high data transfer speeds. And the radio wave based mesh system allows for a wide range of internet connectivity. Our secondary source are super high speed optic fiber cables, which provide reliable internet during emergency situations. For external communication, we use the NGYAG lasers, which have a shorter wavelength, allowing for larger amounts of data to be transmitted. The secondary source includes communication satellites, which are gonna be subcontracted from double dyne astro systems via litigation emitters. Next slide, please. Astoria will have two main transportation paths. So first of all, for intra-tourist transport, we have four devices and for intra-tourist one. The smart e-bike is a personal device for every single resident, uh, self-balanced using gyroscopes and can be summoned uh, by any user at any point of time. The mini transporter will have 12 seats and will be commuting people on fixed tracks across the tourist. The emergency vehicle, as the name suggests, is only meant for emergency condition. Please uh, move on to the next slide. The people's card, it's again meant for exceptional circumstances in case of senior citizens and pregnant women who cannot use the bike for transportation. These cars will allow four people to be seated at a point of time and allow for smoothless uh, commuting across the tourists. Now maglev lift will be used for inter-tourist transportation. We use maglev using electromagnetic electromagnets as this allows for movement in both directions. And maglevs will, uh, maglev elevators will run in loops across the settlement, transport people between Torai. And the diagrams on the right show you the routes for various transport services. Next slide, please. Now, construction machinery has three components. First of all, we have the construction board, which is, as the name aptly suggests, it's a versatile board for internal and external construction. The machine's legs double as thrusters for extra vehicular construction, whereas the modular arms can be automatically swapped for instruments to fit the situation. Contour crafting involves 3D printing, which uses raw materials and will be producing structures as per our needs. Lastly, the die cast uh, equipment will be used to make all of the alloys required in the construction of the settlement. Next slide, please. We at Rock Donald firmly believe the importance of our subcontractors when coming to Astoria. As you can see in the table, we have list down all the subcontractors that require specific requirements and we have list down those. And in the very next column, we have said the what can we provide for them and how we have accommodated for them. You can, for example, you can refer to the residential map uh, that how we have managed to it to me land requirements and how we have accommodated with them. And in the diagram below, we have shown that how we have catered different subcontractors onto different tourists according to their needs. So yes, we firmly believe the importance of our subcontractors and allocated according to them with their needs. That's it for operations, They're handing it over to human factors. Next slide, please. 
So starting off with human engineering on the top left, we have listed uh, we have listed down the consumables with the quantities, and we aim at providing a lot of calcium for stronger bones to resist side effects of low gravity. We have a lot of retail options as you can see that have been listed down on the right. Uh, we we would be uh, we would be having at least one retail shop within a 300 meter radius. The neighborhood one would ha would be having modern retail retail facilities uh, like electronics, and neighborhood two would be having more cultural with foods of different cultures. Next slide, please. So here you can see the neighborhood one with more of modern infrastructure. On the right, you can see the facilities present in neighborhood one. Next slide, please. So here is the neighborhood two, which has mainly the residential area. And at both the sides, you can see two corridors where people can have direct natural views of outer space. Next, next slide, please. So here we start with 4.2 and here are the floor plans of interior of a settlement. A number, a number of uh, the houses and dimensions have also been mentioned. The furniture have been subcontracted to remotely local products and household board, uh, household boards were uh, subcontracted to boards for you. Next slide, please. So here on the top, you can see the floor plans of couples, luxurious and family. And at the bottom, you can see the exterior designs that have been carefully designed to attract residents. Next slide, please. Moving on to 4.3, we at Astoria hold great importance in the safety of the residents. And therefore, there are three essential aspects of safety and security that need to be taken into account as displayed. Number one, we've provided two spacesuits, including spacesuit Alpha, which will be the one that will be worn by individuals when inside Astoria, as well as when traveling from one tori to another, as well as spacesuit Beta, which is reserved for space excursions and the quantity for each is lifted, uh, listed in the table. And in terms of protection, spacesuit beta will have multiple layers, radiation protection, a temperature regulator, as well as a life support system, which will have an oxygen supply. While alpha will be more customizable with a limited oxygen supply reserved for emergency situations. Number two, we provided the features of extravehicular units, which, which include handrails, handrails as well as foot restraints for maximum security and safety. And number three, we've provided an isolation system for various habitable volumes in emergencies as shown, which will include an emergency squad that will be put into action for the security of individuals, multiple entry and exits for evacuation, as well as the use of airlocks and safety stations for individuals. Similarly, the image below also displays spacesuit beta as well as spacesuit alpha. Next slide, please. Here, the donning and doffing process for those spacesuits is listed below. With donning, including checkups, a safety breathing, as well as a pre-breathing process in order to purge the body of nitrogen to avoid decompression sickness. And the doffing process, inclu doffing process includes the electrostatic dust removal, the removal of the spacesuit, as well as a medical checkup of the individual. Similarly, on the right, we've... Uh, We've displayed the position of various airlocks on the residential tour as well as the variable G tour. Next slide, please. Moving on, recreational fa facilities and activities are of great importance on Astoria, and therefore we've provided a wide range of them as not tolerant, which include facilities in zero gravity, including a firing. Uh, Flying arena, which will pro where people will be provided with necessary sources of propulsion. Similarly, in the residential tourists, we've included a gym, a virtual reality park, as well as an amusement park that will be provided to people of all ages and will have spacious areas for a certain sense of sense of freedom. Similarly, to accommodate minors, we've prov provided boxing arenas as well as the Miners Club, which will be a club geared towards minors and will provide contact sports like football, basketball, as well as various avenues to get, get rid of their anger and resentment that they may have built up. 
and the, on the bottom right you can see the location of dog ports on Astoria. Next slide. In terms of general facilities at Astoria, we provided three, which can be divided into retail, performance-oriented facilities, as well as sports. Similarly, we've also provided a community center as well as interactive museums, which include interactive multimedia installations as well as virtual, uh, as well as holographs. And similarly, in terms of restaurants, we've provided a domed restaurant, automated restaurants, as well as holographic restaurants to depict all themes and all cultures, as well as various types of food. Thank you. That will be all from Human Engineer. Next slide. Automation will be used for construction functions, including mining and transportation of asteroid resources, assembly of exterior and interior structures, and finishing of interior spaces. We've divided the robot used for constructing the settlement into fixed base, articulated, and mobile robot. On the right, you can see a table detailing the different types of robot for construction, their corresponding applications, and quantity. The bottom left is a picture of a modular self reconfiguring robot called a Vanguard, which can attach to other Vanguards to form larger structures using electromagnets. Accumulation of dust is prevented through an inbuilt ventilation system. Additionally, each Vanguard can be fitted with specialized modules for different purposes. Next slide, please. Initial construction is performed in orbit by Vanguard, during which they use laser altimeters to generate 3D maps of asteroid resource concentration, as well as shape and surface features. Once this is completed, asteroid mineral extraction apparatus, or AMEs, lock onto the asteroid surface using gripper modules and begin mining using shearer. Shearers possess ranging arms to allow mining to great depth. 3D models of an AME and a shearer are provided below. AMEs are covered by dome-shaped Kevlar collection bags held down by clamps, which assist in stabilizing the asteroid around the mining area. Kevlar is used for its high tensile strength and can be used to effectively contain mined material in zero-G. Cybernetic transportation units are CTUs, transport material to refineries, where metals are separated and purified with the help of nanobots. Finally, 3D printing units or 3D PUs perform appropriate processes on refined material and print required external and internal structures using extrusion additive manufacturing to extrusion nozzles. Next slide, please. Below, you can see a representation of the consolidation process of vanguards through which they combine to form AMEs and 3D PUs. After IOC, robots majorly retain the same functionality. The right side of the PPT outlines some changes, including repurposing of vanguards and 3D PUs for repair and, in and installation using modules such as claws and drills. Teleoperation will be employed as a contingency for robot malfunction. Human monitoring is described on the left and involves high quality transmissions by cameras placed on board. Next slide and over to you. Hey, hold on a second. When you're doing the slide transitions, we're missing a slide while the transition graphic thing happens. So you're going to have to slow down, pause, give up a moment for the new slide to come up. Sure. Um, next slide, please. So now we're going to move on to the, um, the automation systems for maintenance, repair, and the business uh, facilities. We've given detailed descriptions for automation for base businesses, such as agricultural bots uh, specified by Ketavin uh, Food Production and Operation. Now, when we talk about the 3D printing bots, um, when we talk about the repair bots, the molecular damage is going to be handled by the nano bots subcontracted to Nano Solution. The 3D PU bots mentioned in 5.1 will be reconfigured for repair, and the F1, M8, um, which are going to be subcontracted from Grumbo Airspace will uh, be also reconfigured for maintenance. To inspect the structure, we have devices that will be fit into the walls at a distance of 125 meters from each. Now, these devices have LiDAR sensors and thermal cameras which can inspect the, the, um, which can inspect the structure. And since they have a range of 250 meters, the distance that we have prescribed ensures overlapping. And so it ensures inspection at all times, even if uh, any bot malfunctions. Internal inspection is done through the swarm robots, which are described in 5.4. Now we talk about the access levels and moving your attention to the right part of the screen. Uh, the access levels are categorized into three bases. Now base three is further divided into subsections so that each faction gets access um, according to the need. Sensitivity of the access increases as you move down the table and, and based on the level of sensitivity, we have provided verification methods. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Thank you. Control rooms are an essential part of the settlement, and Rob Donald has come up with three types of control rooms to ensure efficient distribution of consoles and functions. General control room, casks control room, and the debris accumulation control room. Based on that, we've also written down the, the alerts that these control rooms can receive. 
Now, what you see on the screen is the uh, layout of the general control room. And looking under that is an example of a display screen that has information about the docked ships. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Now, this slide contains examples of display screens, the home page, the robot information, screen, the docked ship overview, and the information about all casts. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Safety is essential, and in Rock Donald's view of Astoria, safety is ensured by a well-defined system of alerts and contingency actions. Alerts have been coded into five colors of orange, blue, green, gray, and yellow. And as you can see, each color has been attributed with a particular kind of event. When the events listed in the second column occur, the lights and the relevant alarms blare the respective color. We have a list of physical alerts along with the detailed measures to prevent and contain each and every kind of emergency to ensure safety. Um, moving on to 5.3 and over to Asan. Thank you, Ria. So to enhance livability in the community, the hallmark one as shown in the first image at the right is the flagship personal communication device of settlement and it could work also as an authentication device. One would be given to each resident acting as our ID card and key allowing us to interact with the caretaker 1.0, which is our domestic robot. The second image on the right, as you can see, and the homebot console acting as our personal AI assistant inside the residencies, as well as with our office OS, which would be enhancing work productivity. The recreational robot would be placed around different recreational areas in designated numbers and would help in enhancing the resident's experience through hospitality. Next slide, please. You can see our settlements network diagram on the right. So to ensure that there is no unauthorized access to data, we'll be using the role-based access system as mentioned before in section 5.2. Settlement will receive the signals from Earth and after processing will be sent to the cache server. This will include all frequently used data, which will then be distributed throughout the settlement using the generic subnet as shown in the network diagram. The data will then be selected to be stored in the central cache, which will be done using machine learning by detecting what type of data is used more and what less to suit settlement requirements and to enhance efficiency of the system. Now 5.4 will be done by Arnav. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Asad. Now moving on to five point four, uh, detecting th threats. Automation has designed a very effective system to detect all the threats on the settlement from external debris or any chunks of asteroids. There are many different types of telescopes, like optical, thermal, or radar, that will be located on various positions, like different settlements or asteroids. There will be a very extensive and advanced software that will work in hand with these telescopes and will classify and categorize all the asteroid debris found based on some specific parameters like size, shape, speed, etc. With this done, these pieces of asteroids or debris will be dragged and will also be given a specific uh, will or will also be given a predicted directory. As you can see in the table, this is how scores are assigned to each piece of debris or asteroid and how these scores uh, correlate to what action must be taken against that threat. Moving on to the next slide. Now, action mechanisms. We have designed a whole swarm of robots that will be around the whole settlement and will be scanning for any incoming threats. Uh, threats. There are many different mechanisms that these robots could use to take any action against any threat. Th there are different modules listed down below. One of the examples of these modules that will be, uh, be used with these robots are the net guns. Net guns will be used to capture the slow moving asteroids or pieces of debris that are valuable to the settlement. There are net like structures shot out to slow down the pieces and capture them and pull them inside. Next slide, please. Now, a human intervention. There'll be many cases where the debris prevention system is automated, but human intervention is also needed in some cases. These are the, these are the conditions that are listed down on the left of the slide that will assess whether, the human, whether human intervention is required in the situation or not, and how much of human intervention is required in each situation. The, uh, on the right of the slide is also an example display of the control rooms that shows a lot of information about the robots and the targeted asteroids. Uh, that is it for uh, automation, uh, handing it down to cost. So for cost, we're estimating around $447 billion. Next slide, please. Oh, this is subcontractors list. You can go through the details later. Next slide, please. So for business development, we're mainly looking at three different business opportunities. One is providing for all the mining ships that are going to be coming here. So we have 
uh, different uh, provisions for them, such as recreation and lodging for the miners and obviously our manufacturing units. We also have space tugs, which will be subcontracted to Grumbo Aerospace. We'll be starting off with three and seeing how that goes and then you know, um, increasing that later if we need. Next slide, please. So uh, Astoria will be your hub for the asteroid belt. For this, we're providing two different kinds of fuel depot services. I'd like to mention that our graphics have been inspired by the United Launch Alliance. Uh, next, for fuel production, we're looking mainly at liquefied hydrogen and oxygen subcontract to stuff of life. Other fuels can be manufactured later. Manufacturing opportunities, for that, we have mainly spare ship parts and then potentially in the future, whole spacecrafts. For this, we have growth potential in our manufacturing facilities. And since all the materials will be sourced at Astoria itself, uh, we're expecting uh, materials to be sourced at be chief and then higher profits. Uh, potential markets to be sourced, we don't know how these markets will work in the future since they're quite unprecedented. So for this, what we provided is um, an ability to slowly adapt to this market if and when it grows by upgrading our facilities and matching the customer base. Next slide. So um, Astoria is located at quite a unique place. So for this, we're gonna be conducting a lot of research. We've provided all the provisions for this, such as creating a class 100,000 clean room. I'm sorry, I think the table cut out there. Um, for that, we have um, we need to have uh, air particles of more or equal to 0 0.5 diameters uh, in um, diameter. And uh, for that, we're using HEPA filtration and you can see the other requirements later. Uh, quarantine and safety procedure when uh, working with different primitive life forms. Uh, have been listed and along with this we'll also be building satellites and conducting a lot of research for which we provide special labs and required apparatus. Next slide please. That includes our envisioned design for the settlement. We hope the foundation society utilizes design and sees profit in investing in us. Thank you. Over to the judges for questions. Hey, Anita, please unmute yourself. It, You're it up. Finally, I, I kept on trying and it didn't let me. <laughs> okay. no, no, it does. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to page 33, please. Thirty three. Yeah, there's specifically bottom right. So why does this vehicle have wings? What what are those used for? You beat me to it, Anita. <laughs> Great mind signal. Me too, Anita. <laughs> the, the, okay. <laughs> Privilege of first to ask. <laughs> we are more of an more of an aesthetic feature and can be used somewhat for navigation. We mentioned that they're foldable, so it won't mm -hmm. obstruct any process. It, 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 it doesn't do any good in space, and I, I don't want to pay for aesthetics. Form, form follows function in engineering. I can try. Page 36 for a so second. If I can try to explain, maybe. Uh, if you see the dimensions, the body itself is 4.5 meters wide. So uh, we thought that providing wings will maybe provide some extra stability. Um, rotation wise so and they're also foldable so it doesn't really affect much as a cost. cannot explain this away to engineers especially spacecraft engineers i'm sorry yeah, no, okay next question we, please we have shuttles space shuttles too anita so uh, <laughs> yeah 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 there's a space shuttle as well <laughs> it's in a it's ula cute. depot yeah <laughs> okay how about page 35 i got a question on this one now that we tortured you on wings and space shuttles. Okay, so your internal inspection devices. I, I kind of like this little guy um, and what he's doing. Although you've got LADAR, which is lasers. How are you protecting the population from the laser emissions from this device? So um, the Mars research we did, there were no um, um, there were no severe impacts of uh, LADAR. In, in, there were no concerning impacts of LADAR. And um, as for the protection, we have um, we have health methods and um, nutrition methods that ensure that the bodies of the passengers don't face any problems and don't face any um, any 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 backlogs. 
So uh, I think that that sums it up. Okay, okay I didn't quite clear, clearly hear that. Was the safety features in the robot or are we expecting people to get out of the robot's way? Um, maybe I can help with this. So I, LiDAR scanners, uh, the lasers emitted by LiDAR sensors uh, don't harm humans and don't cause any Um Well, let's just stop right there. They do. They're, they're a laser device and they're, they're dangerous. So go ahead, next question. Very dangerous, Clement. If you stare directly at it, it will blind you. Now, we can go to either page 20 or 24. Either one will work. Uh, 20, 24, there you go, that, that image. So I see um, labs and research facilities and a lot of labs and research facilities are no problem to have near a hotel and near a mall and near a school. But a lot of labs and research facilities, especially when dealing with like new chemical processes to find new, new materials are really dangerous. Uh, so, so what are these, these labs and research facilities doing and are there other labs and research facilities where the dangerous stuff happens? Um, yeah, so if you see the structure, um, there's a few, um, there's a separate refinery torus and there's a separate uh, torus for manufacturing. And the labs are actually in a separate expandable torus, which are all separate. These are just the labs where we'll be conducting, you know, uh, harmless research. So although, you know, like if we find an alien, suppose as I said in BD, um, that will be done in, a, in an isolated lab, which is actually there in the structure. Okay. Uh, and how many students at this university that I didn't ask for and don't want to pay for? <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Okay. Um, okay. Tra transportation hey, is just hey. one little green blob in the middle. I don't understand that. Is that like a, a transportation hub or something? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a transportation hub with some extra vehicles uh, if there's a lot of crowd. Like so, a motor. Okay. Uh, right. So essentially, that is, exa that is exactly the place where the armatures um, from the central axle um, touch the habitable volumes. So that is that will be the hub from where the inter-dollar transportation will happen. So those oh. will be the passages. Got, for got it. Okay, thank you. All right. It just wasn't so, clear to me. So speaking of, of other things, I'm not sure, did we ask for a variable gravity torus or variable so, gravity uh, facility we, at all? Well, what we asked for is we said the artificial gravity is between 0.4 and 0.5 of Earth's and, and we didn't specify and we, do, we don't ask for variable gravity. The reason for that is you could have a tall building where the gravity is going to feel like less at the bottom than at the top. So we, were, we, we said 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 to not constrain to single story buildings? Well, actually the reason why we kept variable gravity was because um, for different research methods, um, I think we found online, the different certain lower gravity levels are more um, preferable. So that's why we kept the variable gravity. Or to oh, clarify and, the uh, potential torus has 0 0.5 Gs, right? Inside it, uh, there are other variable G tori for research research purposes, which are sublet to subcontractors okay. and stuff. Okay, that's a good thing. Um, we, I'm focusing on the um, on the the residential areas instead of the research. Yes, very good to have different kinds of variables. Yes, ma'am, and we also no, give a amount of uh, flexibility to our. Um, to the foundation society to use those variable gravity tori for their own purposes as well. So, so since we're on it, let, let's see what's the complexity involved in making those things variable gravity. I mean, I think I saw extending and retracting spokes and all kinds of complexity there. Are, are you asking about the retractable armatures of the- of yeah, the, yeah, the re, yeah, the retractable arms that provide for the variable gravity. I mean, if you have a spoke, you can just go, you know, kind of an elevator at different parked positions in a spoke, but so seems um, the way overly we, complex. The problem we identified with uh, having something move like an elevator on a spoke is that in the case of in contingency, the rotation of the settlement would, uh, rotation of that particular component would essentially propel that um, volume uh, outwards and therefore it could damage the entire st structure and also damage the people inside. However, in okay. the case where 
you have these retractable armatures that that risk is limited and um, contained okay i just don't think we asked for it go ahead uh, whoever's yeah. next question on page 18. the other 18 well i had a question on that one too let's go to 18. okay so i thought you guys did a real nice job of showing the all the different parts of your settlement consistently throughout the presentation although there were some things i didn't quite understand but this is the only page that shows your communication lasers on the outside of your shields. Are they really there or is that a mistake? No, these are actually there just as markers to show where the set, um, where the oh, set so actually if is. If I could answer. So none, of, none of your other depictions of your settlement, including the ones up front, show a laser communication module in the locations out forward of the shields. So if I could answer, those are not, that's a mistake by a design department, sorry. The lasers are actually those white things that you see um, on the left and like yeah, on the inner of the shields. Answer. That's a good answer, thank you. Yeah, and those rotate also. So yeah, I mean, they can point in different directions. Uh, next question. Well, okay, I'll oh. do one more. Um, um, so, so just, just before we move on to the next question, I would like to bring your attention to the first, uh, the second slide. It has been mentioned and clearly labeled that uh, the laser ray area. Well, let's go there then. Well, no, I, I know where it is. I saw that. One. Yes, never yeah. mind. You don't okay. need to. I saw it. Thank let's you. go to um, page 23. Okay, your your uh, division of um, nutrition's pie chart there. I I don't see any fiber or greens, and that kind of that percentage breakdown looks so much like what we get at Om Shanti. So. <laughs> and that that kind of carbohydrate diet would make me fat. That's a carbitarian diet. Uh, yeah, on. you might want to rethink about that. We we might want some. Carrots and celery and pickles and Just other sorts of and even oh. synthetic meat would be nice. All right, somebody else. Okay, uh, let's see. On their subcontractors, do we see anywhere that where the subcontractors are first activated when they first come on board and you know, need to have support for their there? Um, actually, uh, yeah, we have specified on what part of the settlement the subcontractors are working. I think it's on yeah. the structure. Yeah, right? yeah. Where where is it that we find where each subcontractor first starts? I couldn't. It's in three point four. Okay, what slide number? The previous or, one. Can you just go? Can you just go to it? The previous, yeah. All the, all the subcontractors with their respective I, I, requirements. I'm still, looking, I'm still looking at a pie chart. Okay. Now I've got your chart with the subcontractors. Okay. What's the date that each of those or what phase of construction do each of those? Uh, those have been, uh, sir, when, have, when they will be functional from has been mentioned in the gun chart, the scheduling gun chart, which is right after structure um, steps of construction. Okay. Um, well, show show me the chart, please. Yeah, I think around um, around time block eleven on the Q and A light eleven. Okay, I'm still looking at three point four here. Still see three point four and a ghost of something else. Oh, uh, ten, ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we are. Two point four. Right. Right here. The two point four. Okay. Right. Very good. Working. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So Zap Industries wiring. You don't have wire before you get into. You don't have wire for construction, reconstruction. Oh, that's why we mentioned before IOC because it is used in construction up to IOC. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for pointing uh -huh. that out. Time's up, judges. 
Yeah, I, I, I'd like to point one thing out on this presentation. Um, Jack mentioned he was confused. I, I was a little bit confused and I'm realizing now the reason I'm confused is because the slides were in the order of the RFP, which is, is not a good order for presentation. There are pieces that should be in structures that show up in the RFP and human engineering and other stuff. So um, not, not a good idea to, to present the data in RFP order. Um, and and that, uh, that, I think, confused the judges. Okay, thank you. Um, but good data from Rock Donald. Thank you. All right. What, All right. Next? Thank you, everyone. Um, Anita, would you be able to manage the Zoom meeting with the judges? Sure, I can do that. Um, let's see, who all do we need um, as judges? So if you look at the email that I sent you with the presentation, all the email addresses are in there. Okay. Um, okay. okay, it'll take me a few minutes. Um, uh, judges, uh, let's see. I, I'm hungry. It's lunch. It's way past lunchtime for me. <laughs> yeah, so um, we also... need in eight hours, in eight hours and 30, forty minutes. Okay, so we're we're starting at um, in uh, let's see, uh, nine thirty p.m. CST. Okay. Uh, I, oh, not there. It is. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, nine thirty p.m. tonight. Okay, cool. Um, All right. I'll talk to you then. Thanks. All right. Uh, you uh, in, in the morning. Just, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have a start, start time in the Zoom meeting and I'll, I'll, I'll try to get all the, the email addresses. Okay. Okay, you okay real good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good night, guys. See you in a while. See you in the morning. Bye. Thank you, guys. Your presentations were great. All the hard work has finally showed off. Yep. Lots of improvements since uh, Red Team or Pink Team. Yeah, good job to all the teams. Time to get some rest. See you guys in the morning. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Good day, volunteers. <laughs> Got work to do.